so much fun to come here um, and, and be a part of this place with the pure record club, the qualifying club, everything that they had here. It was just so much fun. And it's a great honor to be in the booth with you guys. I can't wait till my dad gets up here. This is one thing my dad and I have never done. We've never been in the booth at the same time. Of all the things we've done in this sport, never done that. Wow. Well, yeah. that'll, that'll be a first. That's great. Let's have a look at the Goodyear starting lineup for this race. And we're going to go right to the radio and right to the pole sitter. The bat and pole cat. How about you, Martin Shrex Jr., Boyer and the boys up in the booth? You got me? Yeah, I got you, Boyer. Go ahead. Man, red hot. Been fast. Do Dover, Kansas, you name it. You've been the name of the game. On the pole again for today. What What do you got out there? Yeah, I feel good about it. Love this racetrack. And the uh, guys are doing a great job. So see if we can't uh, keep this thing up for all day and finish it off with this auto owner's camera. What's the hardest part about this place? What's the biggest challenge? Uh, traffic. You know, if we can stay up front all day, we'll be in good shape. He's just going through pit road speed here, guys. We're just going to let him go. Checking those pit road speeds, Kyle. So important down there. You see them, what they're doing here. I screwed that first part all up. Yeah. And, and listen, you're right. You heard him say he screwed that first part up. But here's the deal. Checking that pit road speed and having it, it's the second most important thing today about pit road. First thing is going to be getting on pit road. We saw some yesterday. So drivers have checked their pit road speed. They'll reform up out of turn number two and will go to pit road for a last minute updates in the poodle skirt, rocking the poodle skirt, Jamie Little. Oh, Mike, this weekend has just been so much fun from the throwback outfits to the paint schemes. And, you know, Ross Chastain, he has one of those great paint schemes that we'll talk about later on. But what a week it's been for him. He's been the most talked about driver in the sport. And that's, of course, because of his fight on Sunday with Noah Gregson. But I talked to Ross and he told me, listen, I don't want it to come to blows, but I'm always going to protect myself and I'm going to protect my team. Noah and him have talked. They even raced against each other this week and they're putting it behind him. Now, as for today, that number one team, they really feel like they have a car capable of winning so they could be the most talked about team this week for a different reason. Regan Smith. Well, Jamie, Tyler Reddick is somebody who always looks forward to coming to Darlington. In fact, last year, he finished second and third in the two races at this racetrack. Many expect the same thing out of him today, but Friday afternoon, his job got a little bit more challenging. His crew chief, Billy Scott, was ejected from the racetrack and pre-qualifying tech issues. To ask to leave Dave Rogers, the team's technical director, is stepping in to fill in for for Dave or for excuse me for Billy Scott this weekend. He is going to be on the box. He said that everything was set up for him already. There's not too much of a challenge for him as he gets ready to call this race today. Mike. Thanks, Regan. I see you brought your own shade for today. Good move. Well, last week at Kansas Speedway. Well, 37 lead changes. That is a record for a 400 mile race on a mile and a half track. 11 caution flags and this last lap bump and run and that post race altercation left everybody leaving Kansas and very excited about what we might see here at Darlington. Noah Gregson on the right, Ross Chastain on the left. Chastain will roll off from fifth position. Gregson, 29th today. Bubba Wallace uh, will start from the outside of the front row, although Truex has chosen the outside. Bubba will be inside. We listened in on the 23. Definitely got to take what it would give us. Appreciate the effort. It's been paying off lately, so let's keep up the uh, big momentum. Have us a good day. See you all at the end of it. Thanks. Yeah, brother. We got you back. You do you. We'll be good. I love this. Love that pep talk before the race, Bubba Wallace and company. By the way, very good qualifying session for them. We have our favorite, see Truex on the pole, saw that. How about Stenhouse Jr. being up there? Great part of this conversation early, great qualifying effort. William Byron, saw him at the end of that race a, a year ago. Suarez up front, and then Larson and Hamlin. Keep an eye on them, boys. Temperature low 80s. It says 63% humidity. I think they got the six and the nine mixed up there. Ooh, shit. It is muggy here in Darlington. And here they come. Green flag, the Goodyear 400 is underway. Is you and Hamp still out there? Didn't quite clear him off of two, KP. 
Not quite. You saw Truex bobble just a little bit. He was back to the gas, trying to get up on the outside just a little bit, but here he is in one and two. He's got that outside line, got that momentum coming down the front stretch. Race is on, getting into one. He's going to need to clear him pretty quick. Truex is holding real strong on that outside. Very challenging to get underneath these guys like this. Cars are lighter on their feet, low on air. Listen, Bubba's making a statement here in this first lap or so, saying, I'm not giving this up. You're going to have to take it from me. Well, here's the thing about this old wore out surface. You have to manage these tires, but that clean air is so important. That's why you see those two cars battling so hard for this stop spot. As wide as Kansas was last week, that's how narrow Darlington is, especially the entry into turn three. A lot of neat paint schemes, Kyle. It's kind of hard to figure out who's who. See Chastain there in the Dale Jarrett throwback. Keselowski, John Forrest taking it all the way back to drag racing. Cool scheme there. It's a great scheme. I don't know if I'm watching Dale Jarrett or if I'm watching a drag race or Kyle Busch. I don't know if I'm <laughs> watching Fontana. I don't know what I'm watching right now. The first 13 are single file. First side-by-side -side battle is Joey Logano against Kevin Harvick, and now they drop in line. Kyle Busch with a look inside on Keselowski. Nothing there. I think it's really dangerous to get that Truex Jr. out front in this clean air so early. It was really fast. I know it was only 20 minutes of practice yesterday, but folks, trending. You look at long run speed, 20, 30 average. He was right at the top of the sheet. Bush with another look. And no chance on Keselowski there. Further back. <laughs> It's a fight. We've got a throwback driver this week. That 51 is Ryan Newman uh, coming out of not retirement, but let's just say some time away to drive uh, five races for Rick Ware Racing as Ryan Priest goes by. Imagine you put the Rocket Man back under behind a cup car. It doesn't yeah. matter. He's been out, qualified well in front of a lot of good cars. Yeah. That is the best that a Rick Ware racing car that was not sourced from Seward Haas has ever qualified, and Newman's been away. Wow. Funny yeah. how that works. Riding here with Harvick behind Austin Dillon. You hear him modulating that throttle. Pretty loose. Already six laps Good into the race. Six three. laps into the Nothing race. He's three. already working the throttle, trying to modulate, trying to figure out where his car sets best and rebalance it with the throttle. This is a race track. This is a race the racetrack place. Yeah. You cannot race the competition. Race that racetrack. And if you do that, you're going to be just fine when that end of the race happens. Which is which is interesting because you said it earlier, you can't punish these tires too early, but you know you got to get everything you can on a restart or at the initial start of the race. You got to pass these guys. So it's how do you compromise that? How do you how do you find that safe place? Hey, the biggest mover is the 43, and I don't mean the king who just moved from the starter stand all the way up here to the booth, uh, but Eric Jones, feeling a bit ill yesterday. He went all the way home to North Carolina to get a good night's sleep without all the racetrack noise, uh, feeling much better today. And that car looks good with that black roof. And I, I know it's not a vinyl top. I know it's not the Richard Petty vinyl top from 68, but it still looks good. That's a great throwback. Well, you wouldn't want that vinyl top peeling back like it did then. Yeah, that was a mistake. We don't want to talk about that. Don't nope. bring that up when he gets up here, okay? Oh, was that his decision? To peel it back or the vinyl no, roof? No, the vinyl roof. The vinyl roof was all Richard Petty. Style, <laughs> baby. Mr. Style. Mr. Well, back Style. then, that's why they had them vinyl roofs. They looked better than everybody else. You got that right, man. All it needed was a T-top. <laughs> and there's a look at it at that uh, Plymouth by Petty one year later when uh, Plymouth would not give Richard a companion car to the Dodge Daytona. Richard flipped and went to Ford for one season before coming back to Dodge. I'm so, impressed with Bubba Wallace, yeah. boys. He's holding pace with this Truex. Those Toyotas are going to be strong. They have been. You, you take it back to Dover, Kansas Speedway last weekend. These Toyotas, they have really turned the wick up here lately. Bubba Wallace led lap one. Truex has been out front ever since. Nine laps complete. And the fall off has been about half a second every lap, which was led by Bubba Wallace. They have about five seconds on the field so far. And joining us in the booth after completing his duties as one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers of all time is the king, Richard Petty. Welcome back. <laughs> We're back here, ready to go again. But they wouldn't let you drive the pace lap. No, they, 
They've seen me in action before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we couldn't get him off the racetrack. That's last right. We had the black flag. You. We had the black flag. That was, last a, fun, time. That was a fun time, man. I'll yeah. bet. That I'll was. Bet. When you were 13 years old, Kyle was talking earlier. What are your memories of coming here for the first time? What was this place like? A super speedway. Well, it was humongous at the time. You know, we'd run Bowman Gray, Martinsville, and you come here and you know a little over a mile track, and it was just unreal. All the stuff that you see here wasn't here except the racetrack. So I, as, as a boy, you played in the infield. Kyle played in the infield. Yeah. Then you got to go racing. They didn't play. Working on the car? No. They, when I was 13 years old, I was in the pit. Yeah. Working. Yeah. Well, I was in the pit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like the first time you came here to drive? It was just great. You know, it was just a one-groove track yeah. through this corner up here. I really loved the racetrack. It, it never was really good to me, but... I love to run down here because of the challenge of two different corners. I want to ask you one: Was it did it did the track change a lot from the first time you drove it to the last year you drove in '92? The cars changed a lot, but did the track ever change? The track changed because they changed the one and two corner now. Okay, yeah. It used to be three and four. Yeah. They changed that corner, but uh, it still drove basically the same yeah. same way. Take me back to this car. Kyle's been telling us that he said, "Don't ask, I'm asking." That's what I do. <laughs> They said it's got a vinyl top on it. Maybe that was a bad idea back then. It was painted. Oh, yeah. It but, was, but he wants to paint. No, the, when you brought a vinyl top, a true vinyl he top he car. He wants to know why it came up. Came no. well, Went happened, too fast. What happened, we'd cut the uh, part the top of the uh, roof and stuff to set the roll bar up in it. And we didn't weld the top back down to the roll bar. <laughs> okay. There's your answer. <laughs> There's your answer. That so was it was the roof, the steel the, roof. The, 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 the roof came up. Yeah, the oh, whole roof came up. There, there was paint on the I roof. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the old car's pretty good. Yeah. That 43 looks good out here today. Yeah. We're going to find out, ain't we? We've got a long way to go, Betty. Well, Eric Jones has gained six spots. Nobody else has gained more than four yeah. since the drop of the green yeah. flag. Yeah, I know. I, I seen them when they started. Everybody just got in line. Right now, I think they're just... Filling, filling their self out and filling the car out. Just see what they've got to race with. 21 laps complete. Martin Truex has been out front all but lap one so far. Let's check with Larry and get a look at the Brez Tree race strategy for today. Well, Mike, it's pretty simple, the first element. It's four tires every trip to pit road, even if you've just run maybe 8, 10, 12 laps. Possibly looking at splitting all three stages in half, maybe coming a little bit early before that halfway mark to get a jump on the competition with those four fresh tires. And depending on tire fall off, and I've already seen all I need to see, it is substantial. And how your car is driving, we're probably going to maybe split that final, that longer stage into thirds. Because remember this also, we have to keep a count on it. Only 11 sets of tires, 10 stickers, and the qualifiers from yesterday. Yeah, every lap, especially early in the race. Great point, Larry. These guys, all these crew chiefs, those decisions get easier because these cautions are, or these, this race is going green lap after lap after lap here at 23 laps in. You don't want early cautions. That puts uh, the pressure on you later on in the race. Looking at 14th place, Joey Logano for Team Penske using the paint scheme that Roger Penske used. Uh, on an AMC Javelin to win the 71 Trans Am Championship with Mark Donahue and to win Team Penske's first ever NASCAR victory in the AMC Matador, uh, also driven by uh, Mark Donahue. King, remember that Matador? We called that thing the brick. And uh, and it was. Okay, here's what I, hey, we're talking to you. Yeah. Here, here's, a, here's, a, here's what I want to know. Here, at home, you sit on the couch and eat popcorn and watch the race on TV right. and follow it on computer. Right. First thing we did after we got through talking over here, you stood up and looked out the window like there was a real race going on. What's, well, what's, what's up with that? I didn't have a TV in front of me, okay, so you. I had to look at it was a real race. Okay. Yeah, but then when we were trying to talk to you, you're staring at the monitor. Remember the Matador, the, the car we called yeah. the brick? Red, white, and blue, they are patriotic, wouldn't they? It's pretty easy to spot out there. I tell you what, just up from him, Harrison Burton, you see that throwback to his daddy, Jeff Burton, one of the 75 greatest drivers, holding a pretty wheel. Good run for Harrison Burton, 13th right now for the Wood Brothers car. Had a really strong qualifying run yes, yesterday. Sir. You and I both commented. I thought he was going to I thought, thought he was going to be in that top five and make it to the final round. That 11 just didn't hold up, but I thought it was. Burton in 13th, one spot ahead of where he started the day.
At 10th and 11th place, Kyle Larson. Uh, Kyle Larson took him a while, but he got past Tyler Reddick for 10th place. Uh, Ross Chastain has moved up from Denny Hamlin. Chastain's climbed all the way back up to fifth, which is where he started the race. So Truex, Wallace, Byron, Suarez, and Chastain. Traffic becoming quite a factor for the race leaders now. Well, so much factor that second place car, Bubba Wallace, is running down there. And Truex almost got an offense right in the middle of three and four. Yep, copy that. There you saw the fall off. A lot of fall off out here. It's slipping and sliding around. Sun is out. This cloud cover's burnt through. Sun's burnt through the clouds. And man, it's got these guys slipping and sliding around, especially on these old tires. This Chastain yeah. is coming. The one car pass in Stenhouse Jr. And the one thing you're seeing here when, as he passes Stenhouse Jr., we saw it earlier when he passed Denny Hamlin. They get out of the way a little bit. They know racing at this point in time with this many laps on the tire is going to slow them both down. And it, everybody's going to catch up. Richard, great point. That's something that probably hasn't changed over the years. You got to have to race this racetrack, manage them tires. Yeah, I think uh, the best thing to do is race the racetrack. Forget about the rest of the cars. You know, get your car running, get you a groove, and then find out where you are beating somebody else. But race the racetrack and you're better off. Tell you somebody that's out of the groove, it's this 11 car. Denny Hamlin struggling, falling back quite a bit. These two right here, the 5 and the 45, have been at it too. And they go underneath Denny Hamlin. Now, the biggest movers in this race Kyle Busch plus 5, Ryan Priest plus 6, and Jamie, Eric Jones plus 7. Yes, and it's very fitting with the Petties in the booth to talk about the 43 and Eric Jones. It was a rough Saturday for this team all around. Not only did they miss the balance, but their driver was under the weather. Eric told us that he had to go home last night, had to get some fluids, but he's feeling much better today. They adjusted on that race car, and he's up eight spots right now. So going in the right direction, Regan. Jamie William Byron up one spot from where he started to the third position, but we were to the part of the run right now where the team had a little bit of concern. They told me earlier today they felt like they had a good short run race car. They needed it to be a better long run race car, though, than what it was yesterday in practice. They made some changes overnight. Right now, William Byron has been keeping the team updated every five laps, and his speed is looking very good as we get to the end of this run. Byron in third. He has erased uh, two of the four-second deficit to the leader. Uh, since uh, we dropped the green flag. Jamie on the 11. Denny Hamlin's fallen back four spots. He just came on the radio. Clint, when you were talking about something going on with him, he might have a right front flat. You're trying to make it five more laps to come in, We're keeping an eye on that 11 right there. So that's, there you go, Larry. There's a the strategy. They're going to caution. Is it possible fluid on the racetrack? Haven't really heard where yet, but that's the, just what the doctor ordered for 11. Denny Hamlin needed that caution. So, Larry, why would they have wanted to stay out five more laps if they thought that tire was going down? <laughs> they were doing their best, Mike, to try to, as I said earlier, trying to split the stage in half. Maybe come just a little early, but you don't want to make that second run in this stage too long on tires. That's why Chris Gabehart wanted to go a few more laps. And here's some audio from Team 11. and then just, I mean, absolutely destroyed the fence in three, out of the blue. Yeah, Chastain had just started talking about fluid on his channel that we heard, and this, this caution is for fluid, so. Well, that would answer the question yes. in Denny's voice. You heard him, don't yes. understand it, took off the two, and then went down and smoked the fence in three and four. Unfortunate. Doesn't matter. It, it's happened. Now, what do you do? How do you fix this thing? Got to worry about a tow link. Got to worry yeah. about the damage on this car. But isn't that typical? The car takes off toward the fence, and the first thing you think of, <sighs> it's the car's fault. Something's wrong with the car. Yeah. You don't think the racetrack. Now that is automatic. Okay. You say, okay, what if, if I got a flat tire or it's going down? You know what I mean? And then you find out the tire's okay. Then you look for the oil. Well, here they come, Larry. Riggin? Like Kyle Busch, very good at the start of the race right here. Just told the guys the balance was good. It was just starting to get fun. He's up seven spots as the race has begun. And the 24, William Byron, happy with the balance of that race car. It starts off tight, but it ends the long runs good. No changes for him. Jamie? 
Bubba Wallace comes in. He just wants to be tightened up on entry. They told him that was great. That was a run. We were ready to come in and pit anyway. So we'll tighten them up. A four tire stop here. Martin Shrix Jr. just wants that rear grip to stick with them a little bit longer. First pull for Martin Shrix Jr. ever at Darlington. So far, so good. Here's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Truex holds position. Byron up one. Suarez and Stenhouse up two. Harrison Burton. Oh, baby. Right. That, that's a good point. And I <laughs> yeah. think that's it. You know, I don't know if that was by design, but I think it's a great thing that yeah. it's the easiest thing to change. Those guys can get in there, change it, and never lose a lap sometimes as long as it's under caution. It doesn't take them out of the race. And that, that's the thing. I think that's part of what NASCAR designed into the car. You can get in here, you can change it, and get back going. Kyle Busch will be fifth on this restart. Do anything to help you? You just need to turn it back just a hair? Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, I don't think I've ever pit in that box before, so just getting used to the coming in of it. Um, you know, it's, it's all asphalt runway getting there, so just we'll, we'll be all right. All right, look at your front five there. Ross Chastain, an 8.4 second stop. Uh, we'll wow. have him restart in wow. fourth spot. Truex chooses the outside on William Byron. And one of the top five you won't see up there is Daniel Suarez. He was too fast exiting his pit and will restart in back. I'll tell you another one. You don't, you're going to have to look way back. The five, where was he at? He went from eighth to 24th on that pit stop right there. Big time problems for the five of Kyle Larson. I, I, I found it interesting listening to Kyle Busch's radio where he was talking about, I've never pitted there before. I've never pitted in that place before. Here it is, let's see what happens. Oh, Jack, it fell off the jack. Mm. Had to go back and jack it back up. 17 second pit stop, that'll do it. Wow. Not only did Jackman have to lift it, he also then had to position the right front tire. <laughs> Took a long time. Ready for the restart, 42 laps complete. 48 to go in stage one. Great restart for Truex. William Byron on the inside did not fire off quite as well. Now he's got to battle Bubba Wallace. Still hard for me to figure out all these cars and the schemes. You've got a, a Gordon racing for second. You got a Jared out there. Uh, you got John Force out there. Uh, Richard Petty's on the racetrack. <laughs> these schemes are awesome. Watch it. <laughs> and the Washington Redskins for Ty Gibbs. There goes there Kenseth. Is. You saw Matt Kenseth go by. <laughs> Hope Commander, excuse me. Christopher Bell. <laughs> Good looking paint schemes out here. Such a neat weekend to throw back to all of our legends of the sport. Kyle underneath Chastain. Here comes Keselowski. Great weekend going for Keselowski. A lot of optimism coming into this weekend. Our best forward so far coming out of that RFK bunch. Good to see. Yeah, we talked about it. And listen, we talked about it in that first segment. You got to get everything you can on these restarts. We see it week in and week out. These guys are just overly aggressive on restarts trying to get it. So no matter what you think your car is going to do in 10 or 15 laps, you feel more comfortable jumping up in the fourth or fifth and dropping back to fifth or sixth uh, and gaining those positions. Early. Yeah, you want somebody to pass you instead of you having to pass Yeah, exactly. Them. Exactly. You saw Bell on the bottom of that black and yellow car. He is gaining some ground on the inside. Up to 60. Make that 15th now. And now he's carrying the in-car camera dedicated to Peter Larson, the fellow who brought the tilt and panable in-car camera to NASCAR uh, from Australia back in 1981. He and John Porter formed the company BSI and Peter just retired this week after giving us 40 years of being right there alongside the driver like nobody had ever done before. And for everything he has done for our industry, that's Peter on the right and some of the early cameras and later ones there on the shot. Wow, he has look at that. definitely that cool. changed the way you enjoy auto racing at home. Congratulations on a great career. Listen, he's changed the way I enjoy auto racing at home. Uh, when we sit at home and watch it, sit at my dad's house or wherever, when you see it, you get a different perspective. And it's a perspective that you remember from being in a race car. So it is, it's it's straight up legit, just stuff. Yeah, I was watching old time race and how much the deal has improved as far yeah. as 
being able to cover it with all the cameras and stuff. That, that's because when you raced, they used to cover it with one camera. That's <laughs> okay, it. Okay, buddy. All right. Sometimes they didn't have a camera. <laughs> that's right. A lot of those races, early races, were not uh, on live TV or even on film. Jamie. Well, Mike, I reported Denny Hamlin had an issue. What had happened is he hit that fluid on the racetrack, got into the wall. This is the right front, the right rear, clobbered it, took all of that throwback font for Goodyear right off the sidewall. The good news, though, for Denny, the wheel, the steering wheel is straight, so he's continuing on right now back in 10th position. Okay, that tells me that toe link's not bent. As long as that wheel's straight, that pretty yeah. much means your alignment of the car is still intact and where yeah. it's supposed to be. Great point. He's not having to compensate for it in the steering wheel. To, so the car's not dog tracking down the straightaway. It's running, still running in a straight line. So he should be able to recover from this. That caution was great for him. It was great at a great time for him. Richard, watching these cars go around the racetrack, it just takes me back. You know, you get into three, tons of braking with these new cars. Um, the momentum you carry around here, the speed. And then we have rack and pinion steering. Back in your day, <laughs> you didn't even have power steering. You didn't have power steering. You turn, you know, almost a full round just to get through the corner. Can't and imagine now, that. Now they move the thing, you know, maybe a fist full as far as they go. So steering is so much better. And, uh, you know, really the cars are so much better as far as that part of it. It's just harder to set these cars up than what the old time cars were. We watched the communication, the chemistry, right, between the drivers and the crew chiefs, Dale Inman and, and yourself, together so many years, that trust factor, the belief in one another. Man, well, what a we, story. We were the computer, okay? Yeah. You know, i tell Dale what it was doing, and Dale would figure out what to do to make it work. So, you know, that, was our, trust, that was our computer. The trust night. you guys had yeah. in one another, the belief, right? Well, I believed in everything he did. He pretty much believed in what I did, and... Most of the time, we got the job done. For a lot of years. And seven championships together. Yeah. Seven Daytona 500s, 200 victories. Wow. Watching these guys, you know, we're, we're coming off a weekend. We've seen some scuffles, right? We've seen some, some uh, throws, some haymakers, if you will, after the races and stuff. Who is your worst competitor? Who, which one did you yeah, not get us. along with the, tell us. the most? The ones I got and didn't get along with? Yeah. I got along with everybody. Sometimes they didn't get along with me. There had, I'm not letting you off that easy. There had to have been one of them that got under your skin. I, I'm, I am going to tell you this, that I, I, I've seen the man numerous times. I have felt it. He's got the longest pointer oh, finger you I have ever seen. Those. When he starts pointing in your chest and starts, I saw, I saw him talk to Bobby. I saw him talk to Earnhardt. I saw him talk to Daryl numerous times. Uh, so, And all these guys have the same story. When that finger comes out and starts pointing at you, you, you pay attention. I didn't wreck him, but I wrecked one of his cars, yeah. and I got that finger. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking you know about. What right about. in the chest bone. I don't, I don't mind if you beat on my drivers. Just don't beat on my cars. That's it. <laughs> okay. That's it. That answers your question there about you the go. scuffle last week. Right. That now, that's, now, that's funny. Larry yeah. Mack would tell you just the opposite. You guys go out behind the barn and take care of things. Don't you wreck my race car. Yeah. That's, There's last the two week. I was talking about yeah, last week. You know what, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the emotion that goes on in these cars and these guys confronting each other. I, I like that. I like to see that passion. I like to see Ross's passion. I like to see Noah's passion. We've seen it so many times in this sport. You don't want it to come to where it overshadows what the race is. The sport is about racing. The sport's about going out there, competing against each other, and putting it all on the line. And here's two competitors we're watching right now that put it on all, all on the line. They didn't agree with the same line they put it on, but at least they put it all out there. And the two fellows that jumped in didn't just happen to be there. They yeah. are NASCAR security, plain clothes <laughs> security. And they were right there in case things got. I saw him down. I saw him down there pre-race, and I said, man, couldn't you just, like, slipped yeah. just a little bit for, like, 10 seconds or something? <laughs> just made it more yeah, interesting. Yeah, just tripped accidentally, yeah. so I'll be with you in a second. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking, about the, talking about that, talking about your competitors and stuff, Pearson was always good here. Pearson was always yeah, incredible it, here. This was his best race. Terry Labonte was always yeah. good here. There's so many guys that just kind of latched onto it. Allison was good here. Allison was good. When we first started and I first started racing here, Tell me how to pass somebody here because it's, it was a momentum track back when you drove. Even though you guys had unlimited horsepower, yeah. no downforce, all that. Tell me how you passed somebody. Well, you found out where you was beating him, and you didn't just follow him right in the corner. And, uh, you know, 
be your best bet. You found his weakest place, you got back and got your running start and passed him at his weakest place. So even then, you had to get a run. You, had you to, couldn't you had just to run up to him and pass him. Yeah, even though we didn't yeah. run him. Martin Truex continues to lead the Goodyear 400 after 64 laps. While second place, Bubba Wallace has run more laps in the top five today than in his prior nine starts here combined. He's the second place car with William Byron third, Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain the top five. Now here is the fall off in lap times since the pit stop as these tires wear. Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, I'm able to look at miles per hour all the way around this mile and third track, and we've been kind of tracking Martin Trex Jr. And what we did, we looked at his miles per hour at the end of that first run, and the first couple laps of this run right here, and he's on into a run, he's eight to ten miles per hour slower to end of both straightaways than on fresh tires. In the middle of the corner, 14 to 16 miles per hour slower. Wow. Wow. That is a wow, man. Well, he has the Xfinity fastest lap of the race at 166.9 miles an hour. Truex, that is. Bubba Wallace second, William Byron third. Now, Kyle Busch didn't set his fastest lap of the race till lap 46. Everybody else did it uh, in the first four laps of the race on that graphic. That's odd. Yeah, that the car would be better after the well, yeah, they made adjustments right. after the pit stop. He comes out firing and uh, he's faster. I think Bruce in the pudding. I think Denny's fine. You know, he's holding steady right there, right outside the top 10 and 11th. Here's Harvick right on board with him with that driver's eye behind it, him as well. This is a typical Denny race. He just hovers there around the top 10 in the first segment. He moves up a little bit in the second, and then you've got to contend with him at the end. And we saw in practice yesterday, he and Truex and, and, and maybe Larson, those two or three guys put up the best long-term speed. Well, Kevin Harvick just flew right by Denny Hamlin up in turn number two. You know, you use the term flew right by. <laughs> and, 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 I, and no, no, no. And, and I'm going to say at Darlington, a lot of time it's got let by. Yes. Somebody yeah. let you by. That's because, right. but, that, because you don't want to race that much here. It's like my dad said earlier and like Clint has said, you race the racetrack. Right. So don't yeah. slow yourself down yeah. racing other people. That's the key. What you just yeah. said. When you're racing door to door here, it slows both of you yeah. down drastically bad. You get that pass made because that's more efficient yeah. for both parties. You better get it sorted out quick yeah. or that yeah. whoever you pass yeah. before you. That's right. The, the yeah. last guy is fixing yeah. to pass you yeah. both. It's better to run behind somebody even though you know you can pass them. Then he is to try to race with him from time to time. Yeah, here, especially, yeah, especially, here, especially here. here. Time lost, scrubbing tire off of it because you're, you're asking more out of the car, leaning on the wheel. All that stuff is a detriment to the cause. Joey Logano has run right around 20th place much of this race, Regan. Yeah, Mike, and it's been a slow start for that 22 car. Of course, the winner of this race one year ago. Team was a little concerned when I talked to Paul Wolf this morning about this race car. It was very loose in practice. In qualifying, it went to very tight. They weren't really sure why. They felt like they would have a tighter race car than they did. Right now in the race, tight in traffic and loose off and struggling to move forward. Jamie Little. And Chase Elliott, when it comes to qualifying this season since he returned from that broken leg, it's been a struggle, and that was the same yesterday. They qualified 21st. Team told me he just overdrove it. As of now, Chase told his team it's not as bad as it looks. I just can't push early, but as we run, it gets better. Now, Chase, this paint scheme right here, a throwback to his dad, Phil Elliott's scheme back in 2003. And yesterday, Chase told me it is this scheme when I was eight years old that made me become a race car driver. He was all smiles driving this car. Wow. Right? And Bill will join us during stage three of today's race. Absolutely awesome, Bill. That is going to be awesome yeah. is what it's going to be. Literally awesome. I tell you what. This is the time where it starts to heat up. Just like we saw before that caution came out, Truex, your leaders fixing to get into this lap traffic, really slowed him down, and Abel and Bubba Wallace, uh, William Byron, Kyle Busch to get on him. Chastain's a good long run card. Keep an eye on this battle as they approach this lap traffic. That's when you're gonna be forced off of your line to make those passes. Yeah, and leaving your line with tires that have 20 or 30 laps on them, and knowing there's somebody coming. There's somebody coming. So there is pressure on Truex. Even though he's out there running, running in clean air, running at his own pace, as he catches that traffic, he knows he has to deal with it quickly so that they don't catch up from behind. 
The difference right now is that at this point, Martin Truex has a three second lead on Bubba Wallace. During the first green flag run of this race, he was only about a second, second and a half in front of Wallace when he caught traffic. See right there ahead of Harvick, Harrison Burton, that 21 Wood Brothers car. Legendary car, legendary race here at Darlington. That kid's holding pretty wheel. A good attaboy for him. Good confidence booster running with these guys. They had two of their vintage cars here earlier. Leonard Wood drove one around the track and Ricky Pearson, Ricky David's Pearson. son. Uh, Ricky drove the other. That was cool. 75 laps complete. Martin Truex in control of the Goodyear 400 at Darlington as we go side by side. NASCAR logo on the number 24. Such a such a good looking car. Uh, There's so many good throwback cars here that really capture the essence of what the original car was and that's I, I think it gets better and better every year. Change the logo on the hood and of course the company name changed and that's about it. Good looking car. Yeah. Saw Jeff down there, part of the 75th anniversary, top 75 drivers. Big smile on his face. Happy to be down there with those legends. So eight to go in stage one. Richard and Kyle Petty with us till the end of the stage. And I've always wondered, since we've never had the two of you together in the booth, which was more difficult, Richard, when you were starting out in racing driving for your father or when Kyle was starting out driving for you, which was tougher? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy, Betty. Yeah. What? Kyle driving? You know, man. Yeah. That's what he said when he took me to Daytona. You want to drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first race, though, right? That was That's the first, first thing you drove is Daytona. Yeah. First, first, first race race. track he'd ever been yeah. on. Did, why did you think that was a good idea, what? Richard? That's the fastest track we good. go to. Well, yeah. That's what he needed to do. Learn the speed, man. This is a, it's what this race is all about. Let's speed. just learn the hard way. It was so, here or Darlington. <laughs> Daytona or Darlington. Oh, God. Where do you want to go? <laughs> so the King gives you and your high school buddies a leftover Dodge Magnum yep. to run in the ARCA 200. Yep. And Steve Mill yep. uh, was, was big, and, and Dale and Wade and everybody at the <laughs> shop, we put the thing together, hauled it down there on Clyde. Clyde yeah. kept vapor locking. We had a truck called Clyde that kept vapor locking. We kept having to pump fuel out of the, out of the race car to put in the carburetor <laughs> the Clyde. to get it down there. Uh, got down there, went down there and won the race. Crazy thing. Crazy How about thing. your first? Yeah. When when they toss you the keys, when your daddy did it to you? First race I ran was at Columbia, South Carolina on a dirt track. And I'd never been on a race track. Was that the first time you drove? First, did you first practice time, yeah. or first just time. straight to the and race? It was dirt. And me and Dale and another boy went, took the car down to uh, Columbia. And it was a slick dirt that wore out tires. Uh, I wound up sixth, I think, in the race, a couple laps down. So I was tickled to death, man. Yeah. Come back up the road, and I'd been working on the cars and all that. Come back up the road, and I told Dale, I might like this racing. You know, it's better than working on the car. <laughs> that was a really good idea, by the way. Really, really good idea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Worked well. Great career move for Stock Car Racing's all-time winner, uh, Richard Petty, and his son Kyle. Thrilled to have them with us here during Stage 1 at Darlington. Martin Truex trying to close out Stage 1. He has not won a stage in the last 28 races. Uh, not since he swept the stages at New Hampshire. Has Martin gotten the 10 points and the green and white checkered flag at the end of a stage? I think Truex, he's definitely the car to beat, but I'm telling you, somebody that's entering this conversation is this Ross Chastain in the one car. Very fast, starting to get close to Wallace. Look at this battle. Heating up. Wow. Harrison having a little bit of gearbox trouble, I'm hearing about, having to keep it in fifth gear. You see Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin hounding on him. That's going to be a problem for Harrison Burton, especially when you get into traffic. Going to need that downshift into fourth. Hopefully they can remedy that problem, but it probably doesn't look good, Kyle. No, it doesn't look good, and that's a perfect example. You saw Hamlin run up on the back of, of Harrison, have to slow down, and Larson took advantage of it and got around him. Let's hope he can get to on and off pit road okay. There, now here's Daniel Suarez trying to stay on the lead lap with two to go in stage one. Look at the difference one mistake makes in this cup series. Yeah. Had a uh, speeding penalty on that running fourth speeding penalty. Now he's trying to hold on to the lead lap. Unbelievable. That's how fickle racing is and how crazy it is. You put me at the front of the pack. I can run with the leaders. You put me in the mid pack. I'm just there. Race for third on your right as we're in the final lap. 
of stage one. Martin Truex has led all but lap one of this race. William Byron 1.7 seconds back. Remember when stage racing began and Martin Truex made a point of gathering up all the stage wins and stage points he could. This will add to his all time lead of stage race wins as they come off turn number four. Green and white checkers will be in the air for Martin Truex picking up his 57th career stage win. Stage one is in the books. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Who are you looking at? I'm looking at Chastain. I think right now the obvious is Martin Truex Jr. out there in the lead, but this Chastain is coming and coming in a hurry. Ross Chastain all the way. William Byron has just kind of methodically made his way right up into contention behind Martin Truex. Uh, finishes up this first stage in second spot. I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, 24. I mean, Jeff Gordon, you know, he got honored today. So I like that. I, I, I can get around that. All right. Larry Mack and Jamie. Yeah, Mike, I went back a little bit deeper inside the top 10. Christopher Bell had never had a top 10 in Darlington until last year. We know how many top 10s he's had this year. Qualified 16th and on that last restart until the end of stage one, made up 10 positions to get inside the top 10. Yeah, I'm going to go with Eric Jones. I know he started off the weekend with a little bit of a stomach bug, but started in 28th. He's up to 16th. He's won at Darlington twice before in the Southern 500. I think he's one that you got to keep your eye on. Those are your credit one bank ones to watch. Nobody picked Martin Truex because we have a no push rule here uh, <laughs> well, on FS1. And that's the obvious. When you right? lead all but one lap, nobody needs to pick you. Right? I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Stenhouse Jr. I mean, I really thought that he would fall out of that top 10, and he's still holding steady right there in seventh. Look down the list. Harrison Burton in 11th having gearbox issues still right there uh, knocking on the top 10. These, these are good runs for those guys. Desperately needing some some good things and, and a good turnaround. There is Burton. You saw him battling. He was in the top 10 for most of uh, stage one. You want to talk about a rebound? I mean, we this Larson, you know, you can't. Well, he was a favorite coming out of yesterday, obvious. He, but he went from 8th to 24th, now back, uh, you know, running uh, 12th right now. Needing a better pit stop, boys. 17-second <laughs> stop's not going to work. Uh, nope. not work. And Kevin Harvick, Harvick moved up 12 positions uh, in that last run since the last restart, as did Eric Jones. Uh, they were the biggest movers in the second half of stage one. Harvick all the way up into eighth place. All right, pit road is open for the lead lap cars. Regan. Well, Kyle Busch in the eight car trended just a little bit freer that run told his guys that never got loose. It or never got tight. It stayed free the entire time. Wants a little bit of rear grip and the 24 of William Byron. It was a simple answer to him. The car is pretty good. Maybe just a little tight, but he does not want to adjust on it just yet. Jamie. Bubba Wallace in the 23 finished fourth last week. Carried that over. Got a front row start here. Things are trending in the right direction. Bubba's saying just tighten me up a little bit in the entry to one so my car stops swinging. Got Martin Truex Jr. in the 19. He said I'm pretty happy. Don't want to be any tighter at that two thirds mark. So they're hardly adjusting on that 19. There's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Brad Keselowski up three, Kevin Harvick up two, and Kyle Larson's team got him four spots on pit road. Boy, life with your family. <laughs> and where you been? We've missed well, you. I, thank you. That means a lot. There, yeah. yeah, I haven't done a backflip in a while. I definitely haven't put on makeup in a while. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so cool for me. Um, I've had the chance. I got to race, live my dream, go do all this fun stuff. I've, I've been on adventures around the world, been farming a little bit, raising a family. And, um, and I'm just honored to be here today. What does this weekend mean to you? I know we've tried, Jacob Ullman tried for three years to get you to join us in the booth for, you know, just for one afternoon. But how about all of this weekend and the way it all came together? It, it was more special than I, I could have imagined. Lisa Kennedy called me and Lisa has been so good to me. I met her early on and, and she told me that I was part of this group and it, it really hit home with me. I feel like I lived a dream. I got to do something that, you know, guys like you and myself just literally dreamed about. And so it's very important for me to come back here and just show how much appreciation I have for NASCAR, all the fans, all the drivers. It's, it's been great. Well, we're thrilled to have you back because, you know, when people are away, uh, everybody's imagination goes rampant. <laughs> and on the Internet, 
Here, there's the meme. Uh, one uh, of them. Yeah. Uh, about Carl and and the farm. I did have to shave before I showed up today. Yeah, that was important. <laughs> and and they said I couldn't wear the hat. But yeah, it's um, no. I am the worst farmer. I will not be on the 75 greatest farmers list <laughs> ever. Really? My brother does a pretty good job, but. Um, but yeah, Missouri's great. Uh, Still like flying, I said. yeah, fun. flying, yes, yeah. flying uh, a lot, having some fun with that. Been volunteering a little bit. Gideon Rescue Company, great folks, and um, like I said, just enjoying life. Well, let's get to it because we're about to start stage two. You did not stage race. What no, is, I, how does this look to you? It's interesting. Um, I can't tell if it would be harder for me as a driver or or simpler, but I can tell you this racetrack, I was so excited to be a part of this, just for a lot of the reasons we talked about, so difficult. And layer, layering the stages on top of managing tires, the balance, planning for that final stage, it's a really complex race to run well. Now you got this new gen car shifting, Carl? <laughs> shifting at Darlington? Yeah, that was always bad if I was shifting at Darlington. I was usually backwards coming on the pit line. <laughs> All right, they're going to come to the Geico restart zone. Brad Keselowski up to third with a 9.7 second stop, his best of the year. Uh, Bubba Wallace uh, had a problem with the lug nut, dropped from third to 18th on that pit stop. Stage two, here we go. Great jump by Martin Truex. Yeah, how about Keselowski? You know, you talk about Wallace having trouble, big time trouble in pit road, but Keselowski, great stop by his guys. Got a little tight off of two there, Chastain looking at his inside. Yeah, talking to Booty Barker down in the garage a minute ago, they said on these tires with these high loads, you know, the cars are really tough to drive through those bumps. And they're also, you know, with all this underbody, Carl, the diffuser underneath of it, the arrow that that, uh, you know, that is so defined behind the cars. You can see these cars get in a wake, much like a boat wake. And man, that thing takes off. You can literally see it on the screen. And I did. I saw that at the end of the last stage when people got into traffic, the pace slowed down. You know, I was talking to somebody in the garage about the diffuser coming up, the balance changing. All these things are what make this track so difficult. You know, you said, um, well, Mike teed you up to look. Here's Bubba Wallace. Man, look at the trouble he's had. That's going to be a tough hole to dig out of. These spots are hard to come by on that racetrack. Way easier on pit road. Yeah, it looked really tough to pass anyone until right, the tires back. really yeah, fell off late in the run. You know, much like last weekend, once you start getting into lap traffic, forcing you out of that preferred groove, that's when it got interesting, just like Kansas Speedway. And so we see guys like Ross Chastain, you know, he, he really went for it here at the start. Are they still managing the tires? Is it that important here like it used to be for the first few laps? To well, exactly right. Yes, Ross Chastain, and he's up in clean air. Talking about Bubba Wallace that we just saw there, door to door, slipping and sliding around. He doesn't have that affordability, just like Suarez. Right. He had to go. He almost went a lap down because of a pit road speeding penalty. What we saw in the first stage, Carl, was uh, the t lap times would fall off half a second in five laps and another half a second over the next five laps. Interesting. And I used to drive this place with the idea that in the first few laps, if I wasn't passing somebody, do not kill your tires because you need them later. All right, Bubba Wallace trying to dig himself out of a hole. He's back in 18th. He restarted 19th. Uh, discipline here. Discipline. We'll work on what we did. Fix it. Give us in the game here. Here is the stop. Ah, uh, just Jeez. didn't have it on, did he? Well, he's got it tight to the wheel, but the wheel wasn't tight to the hub, so they had to raise yep. it up again. Heads up play, though. He yep. realized that he saw it did not come off of that. That brought that jack yep. man back around. He saw that he was still on that wheel and knew he had a problem. We've all done that at some point in our car lives. Tighten the lug nuts and not had them exactly tight. So, yeah, good heads up move. It's, you know, it's hard to see that each and every week with only one lug nut. We used to have five on, right. five off, right, or five off, five on. And with that one lug nut, we still see it because you still have those five dowel pins that align that wheel up. Just like Mike alluded to, that lug nut was tight, but the dowel pins weren't in the holes. So Truex the leader, Byron in second, and Ross Chastain in third. Jamie. And they unloaded with a great car yesterday. Phil Surge and the crew chief told me they were really happy with it. Minimal changes. However, they went too far on that first pit stop, so they backed off that wedge adjustment. And Phil Surgeon said, I love pitting. We have that much confidence in our pit crew. Anytime we need to come today, we're going to get the job done. That's exactly what they did. Now, Ross Chastain in third spot. Well done. 
Dale Jarrett's here today with that uh, UPS scheme. Uh, yesterday, there was a car in the Xfinity race, all in yellow and white. Jeff Bodine hung out with them. Friday night, the truck race, there was a Mario Andretti tribute car, and Mario was here. That's unbelievable. This is so much fun to see all these all these guys paying tribute to the, the guys that made the sport and that they enjoyed watching, some of their family members. It's It's really cool to see. Gibbs, you worked for Joe Gibbs, Carl, and seeing that commander's car out there, the paint scheme, pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. I got to talk to Jack Roush this morning. We were just looking at um, Brad Keselowski, but yeah, Joe Gibbs, Jack Roush, the guys who made my life, made my NASCAR career. Uh, a tribute to Joe Gibbs there. That's really special. Now, I know they're the commanders. Earlier, I called it the Redskins car because Ty's grandfather didn't coach the commanders. He coached the Redskins, so all right there. I think that's fair. Now, I want to go back to one thing that that I heard Bubba Wallace said. He, he said, hey, um, you know, long race. And I think that's the key to really think about that race, how long it is. Don't beat yourself. Don't get frustrated. My only win here came after being two laps down. And that was the key is to just settle in, take what it'll give you. And it's, I mean, they're all hot right now. The cars are probably driving terribly. It's really hard to do. Well, look back at last weekend. I mean, you really don't have to look any further than last weekend at Kansas Speedway, Kyle Larson gets wrecked off of four or five laps in leading the race his teammate William Byron two laps down like you said down and out because of the cautions and everything has started coming they get back to the lead one of them methodically the five car drove up through the field under green because of all those cautions William Byron was able to capitalize on that lo and behold here they are racing for the lead or for the win at the end and you guys have probably talked about it a lot but I mean, you can relate to this, Clint. There's no tougher place to keep your head in the game than here. Oh, yeah, that wall will swallow you up in a heartbeat. And it's so temptatious. Like, all right, well, that was a good lap. The old crew chiefs in your ear. Man, that's a good lap. Give me one of those. You think that was good? All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was just plain luck. The car slid right where I wanted. I stood on the gas and I didn't wreck. Man, it's, it, it's tough to balance aggression and consistency. So here is Ross Chastain closing on second place, William Byron. Regan? Well, Mike, on the track, things have been good for William Byron so far today, but the driver just gave him a report. Remember, it's very hot out today. Take a listen to what he had to say. Just so you know, helmet hose fell off, but it's what it is. Copy, helmet hose fell off. Okay, Ross, you got your helmet hose fell off. That's not a good no. sign there, Carl. I'm hot in this booth. <laughs> okay, that, those cars, folks, those guys are in there literally wrestling these race cars. Their hearts are just stopping in the middle of one and two while they're trying to slide around on these tires. And, you know, if that helmet hose is off. It's got to be toasty. 110 laps complete. We're 20 laps into the 95 lap stage two with Martin Truex out in stage two at the track too tough to tame. This doesn't work without them moms. Happy Mother's yeah. Day, Mama. Laura, good mom's out there. Saw Carl, you brought your mom. Haven't yes. seen her in a long time. Mom, Great to see her. God, it, it, she was so excited to come. And, and Kate, she does such a good job raising our kids. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by great moms. We're all pretty blessed. Yes. You bet. And it's heating up here on the track, folks. It looks like uh, people are struggling. There's people that are overheated. It looks like somebody might be getting loose into three every once in a while. And here you are. Well, there you got Kyle. Uh, you got Christopher Bell looking at the inside of Kyle Larson on the outside of him. That car's bouncing back, Carl. I don't know yep. if you were here at first stage, but Kyle Larson's digging back from a, a, a small, sorry, a slow pit stop. And then this battle right here, Chastain working on Byron for second. He's been working on him for a while. And I, I, I just got to wonder what exactly the balance does as they go. Booty Barker told me that as they get into three later, the, the rear of the car will raise. It'll get loose. And I see people diving in on them into three, but it's so hard to complete a, a pass yet. Maybe as the tires fall off, it'll get better. Well, it's lap traffic. Where's the opportunities? Yep. And the opportunity lies in that lap traffic. Time your time. Manage your tires. Yep. Ride your right. Stay right there. Manage all this. As soon as you start getting in the lap traffic, pounce on them. Use yeah, them as a pick. And I used to feel, as you watch these cars go into turn one, you almost feel like you're tied to a rope in the infield. And if you can wind up turns one and two here and time it all right, you come out of the back straightaway just like you're shot out of a cannon. And that timing, you're exactly right, Clint. In the lap traffic, you can do it better than other people. So last week, somebody hit Clint Boyer for $5,000. And if you are playing today, here is one of the Super 6 questions. Which of these drivers will have the better finish at the end of the race and by how many positions? Right now, Kevin Harvick uh, is in seventh and Tyler Reddick is in 11th. So that is four spots. You're looking 
from Tyler Reddick over there at Chase or Bill or one of those Elliots. Rolling into this weekend in Darlington, I'd have got that wrong. I would have definitely said, you know, Harvick and, and the Stuart Hearts boys have been struggling. I would have went with Tyler Reddick in that 45 bunch. But Kevin Harvick, just like he always does, just steady Eddie and staying right there in the hunt. And I got to think that experience really pays off here more than almost any other oval you guys go to. Regan has more. Well, you guys talk about Steady Ebby, Kevin Harvick in this race right now, moving up to seventh place. Early on, they were very loose with that race car, but they've now transitioned it. Kevin's last report, the car just a little bit tight. I saw Kevin before the race, and he had that gleam in his eye that if he had long runs today, he was going to be very good, and so far that's the case. Jamie? And how about our Daytona 500 winner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Great weekend so far. Qualified third, the best he's ever done here on Saturday. And so far, the car just a little bit tight. They made a small adjustment to help the overall grip. They also told them, fix your entry to three. That's where the guys ahead of you are making up some time on you. And also his crew chief, Mike Kelly, he told me, my driver loves racing here. I love racing here. And when you have that, you have more fun, and it's easier to dial in because this place is tough. There is Stenhouse closing on Keselowski for fifth place. They're about eight and a half seconds behind the lead. I'm impressed with Keselowski. That car is yep. holding steady. The by far the best Ford Mustang we have in the field. Great job, Keselowski, so far. Yeah, like I said, uh, Jack and Steve Newmark both excited about his prospects today. Great crowd. Fantastic so, crowd. Lap 125. All of those towels that are being waved at lap 125 celebrate Goodyear's 125th anniversary as a tire company. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Goodyear, for everything you've done for our sport. And I say that from the heart. I don't receive any free products anymore, which is really a downside to being retired, I can tell you that. Well, it probably worked <laughs> for a while, Carl. You just decided never to come back. You know, you got to at least show your face. I know. That's how those product endorsement that, sponsors work. Actually, what's happening, I've got some bald tires at home, and, you know, oh, I could use that was, some, a little plug. Yeah, a little, you know. So the one Look time how, you show up since 2016, <laughs> he just pitched for a new set of tires on a farm truck. <laughs> Such great. a Carl well, Edwards thing right there. You know, we know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. So we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm well, not unemployed. I'm between now opportunities. Now I see why you come back. Yeah. While Martin Truex has stunk up the show, he's ahead of Goodyear 400. 42 laps out of 95 now in stage two. We're going to start looking at green flag stops here, Carl. One of the hardest tracks in the NASCAR circuit to get on the pit road. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You come down here into turn three fast. Your tires are greasy. You think it's slick up on the racetrack. Then you pull down on the apron. It's like half the grip. And it's really easy to mess that up. And there's markers, right? Three, two, one markers oh. down there to help you, to assist you. But it catches you off guard every single time. You think you've got it gauged, right? Your speed, everything else. Just like you said, you pull off that banking. Uh-oh, I messed up. There you go. There I, you see those markers right there. Yeah, and that is the tightest corner in all of racing right there. Trying to turn in there and not mess that up. I have been an absolute terrible offender of that. Here he comes. Right on cue, pit road opens. Michael McDowell. Yeah, well, that's the first one, right? Yep. Got to try to short pit this here a little bit, try to gain some track position. Now, he was a lead lap car running just outside the top 20. As we watch this, you know, he'll, he'll come out on fresher tires and we'll have less of a gap, and that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, all right, the play is to short pit him, catch him, you know, they're out here yep. running slow. Uh, lap times, he's going to be way faster, but there's still a long ways to go. That might bite you on the back half of this. Yep. Gary Mack. Yeah, Mike, really the lap you'd want to run to is about lap 140, which is about six laps from now. But I think what you're going to see here in the next two or three laps, you're going to see st some start coming because remember, every lap there on those fresh tires versus old tires, it's about two seconds a lap. Wow. Big difference. A couple more players. B.J. McLeod has uh, been in and on pit road. Almirola is on pit road. Great paint scheme there. It's a Dale Jr. tribute to uh, when he carried the Major League Baseball logo. Here comes Haley. The All Star game. Justin Haley in. Now again, these are cars that are not in the top 15, uh, but trying to improve their position uh, at the end of stage two by pitting early. 
Joey Logano in and here's one that is the five of Kyle Larson Regan. Well, Mike Kyle Larson been pretty good here for most of the day other than that slow pit stop early on in the race that got him back right now this run all of a sudden the car went too tight off at turn four he was scratching his head just a little bit about that now he was in eighth place when he pitted we'll see how this uh, picks him up he was nine point six seconds back at the time of his stop Denny Hamlin's in Austin Sindrick to pit road AC Truex still on the racetrack your leader he'll be coming soon he'll have to they drew him in. And he started this with a 4.7 second lead over second place. So big, big um, advantage for him. Here's William Byron coming into his box. Regan. The 24, William Byron asking for adjustments for the first time all day. The car is starting to get too tight for him. He needs help. That means the front tires won't turn. And the eight car, Kyle Busch, just getting looser. Every run needs some help with the rear. Martin Truex surrenders the lead. First time he has given it up all day. To come to pit road. Chastain staying out will be the new leader, but here's Chastain in. So to cover both of those, here's Jamie. Well, Ross Chastain in the one car has been pretty good. Better rear grip this run, he said. Still looking for his first win of the season. Meanwhile, the 19 had to wait on it for Martin Truex Jr. They had a talk this weekend. James Small said, We must get the pole, get this number one pit box if we want to win this race. And so far, they have been perfect today. Ryan Blaney, the new leader, then Bubba Wallace. As Truex exits, here comes Byron into turn one. How's this going to play out? I think, obviously, Byron came in, drew him in by one lap. He's going to narrow it up a little bit, but uh, performance was there for both, both guys there. Great job. So it was a 4.7 second gap before pit stops. Truex to Byron. Brian Blaney throwing it back to his dad Dave Blaney's season in the world of outlaws in which he won five races and then went on a couple of years later to be the world of outlaws champion. There is uh, Dave Blaney at the Moody Mile at Syracuse. Man that was a cool race car. First year that he drove for Casey Luna was uh, that season. So Blaney the leader. Wallace four and a half back. Then Daniel Suarez. Who uh, recovers from that speeding penalty. We'll see how it plays out as this round of green flag stops continues. Well I think the advantage went to Larson. Larson's the one that picked up. Utilize that green flag stop. There's the comparison. Truex a little quicker on pit road. Larson stop was better. Byron, excuse stopped. me, Byron. But I think that's exactly why you saw kind of a, you know, even performance on the green flag stop there. Byron did close the gap, if I'm not mistaken. And Blaney will pit and surrender the lead after being out front for three circuits. Wallace with him. That'll cycle Truex back to the lead. And now he and Byron are only two and a half apart. So William Byron, by coming in a lap earlier, picked up what seven seconds on uh, on Truex. Well, that exchange. shows you this the advantage right there, Carl. Right. I mean, it, the proof's in the pudding. You got to be careful, but that can also bite you on the backside of these runs. Right, and we'll see how that plays out. But on the backside of the run, especially a long one like this, you'll be in more traffic. So if you're crafty, you get lucky. Maybe you don't lose that advantage that you gain. That's where the chess match is. It's a gamble. Yes. All right, short pit. I can help you on the front side, but the back side, you might be in heavy traffic on older tires. That'll even bite you worse. But Byron likes it right now. So Truex back to the lead. He's only won one of the last six races in which he's led 100 laps or more, but it happened right here in this race two years ago. About this, Chastain made quick time with William Byron in second, and man, he is on the rear bumper of Truex. As he dives underneath here, if he can't complete the pass here, watch the line he runs into turn one. Something I've never done. He ran in high, actually, and I heard guys have been working on this. Truex is getting tight. You see him almost knock the wall down there, had to lift, and the one's looking underneath of him because of that. Well, Ross didn't. Chastain is doing what nobody has been able to do all day, pass Martin Truex. Well, he hasn't got by him yet. This gets pretty tight right off of here. Way tight. This is where all the trouble happens. Truex, you see him lifting uh -oh. out of the gas again. He's handling his win away in this 19 car, your leader. It's not laying down the old yet. leader Carl. There it is. New leader. Yes I hear you. 
She likes what she sees. This would be a good time for me to tell you about my sponsorship with UPS I used to have. It was spectacular. Good job, Ross. <laughs> Oh, seriously, good move. He's had his elbows up all day. Yep. He's been digging, going forward, finding grip. He ran him down with a different line than I've seen anybody run down there up in the leader, you know, lead group. And good job, Ross. He was my ones to watch. Really? One to watch, Carl. Ah. I picked the one. You did. I picked the one one. Carl, yes. you know, all right, we saw you retire. 2016, we yep. talked about it. Um, saw Jimmy Johnson retire. Tried some other forms of yep. motorsports. You know, have you tried anything else? You I done anything, any kind of racing? No other? race cars. And it was, yep. I was talking to, I think it was Casey Kane earlier. He said, well, that was easy to not race when I first stepped away. But it's getting harder and harder. I like right. sliding stuff around. I like driving cars. So there'll be a time where I go do something, maybe some sim work, something like that. Like, That's uh, what you want to do, sim work? To see if I can still drive. Oh, it's okay. a step-by-step -step process. Right. I'll let you be my sim drive. You want to set my cars up, and I'll go back racing. Is that... I don't know. I, I love racing cars. I love driving cars. Yep. Um, but I want to do it 100%. And for me to step away from the sport when I did, I got to go do my the things I wanted to do 100%. And if I ever come back, I want to be able to give it all I've got. Well, you keep plugging Goodyear the way you are. Maybe they'll let uh, you drive the blimp. Uh, one more thing. I have heard the legend has it that you sailed the ocean blue. We did. We motored across from Europe, across the Atlantic. My nickname's Buckets because I threw up the first two days. Then we went back over to Europe and as a family cruised around. And right now we're building a sailboat. I'm very excited about it. And I'd say that's what's got my blood pumping the most is go travel the world by boat. I don't know why. Don't no, ask we me. We burnt gasoline our whole entire lives. You're a fast race car driver. You want to <laughs> sail? I do. And I'll tell you who is sailing right now is Chastain. And Truex is struggling. As we watch a field go by here, I cannot help but think this is the time that frustration is mounting with all of these guys. Well, not everybody is as happy uh, as laying out on the ocean, <laughs> doing the slowest thing possible. Uh, there are some drivers that are not running as quickly as they'd like, and they've expressed it on the radio. I'd block this early on this kind of a racetrack. I know, it's so dumb. Aggravation is not out of me. I think I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and then all of a sudden I just pick up a massive tight. And I have to really check up right there instead of rolling into a speed. Front end pace, what do you need for that? I mean, here's my thing. I can go faster, but I just think I'm going to pay for it. So that's a me problem, not a you problem. I was definitely tighter at the start of the run, but hell, if I'm not, I'm going to be shit, So I don't know. Wow. It's pretty Been good there. logic. Yeah. I think that comes, you know, watching these these race cars go around here with the diffuser, right? That definitive, very defined uh, draft out of the back of these cars, crossing that lake, what, like we talked about. You see them as they approach those cars, four or five car lengths back, Carl, picking up a massive push, happening to get out of that wake, forcing them in a different place on this racetrack. That's a challenge. Yeah, I'm enjoying your boat analogies. That's great, the wake and all, but. I, I do I do believe these cars are very, very difficult to drive from what the guys have told me. You can't just muscle it around, pitch the rear and get it to turn. You know, Ryan and Newman and I talked a little bit about it. Your window's small, that diffuser changes, traffic's a, a, a bear. And I am interested in this pit strategy because as we talk about all these things, I think that's going to be the key and and there's a lot to that. I think one of those keys to this racetrack is this track is ever changing. We know that as it rubbers down, it picks up a difference. Listen along. I'm just afraid I'm a little too loose. The leaders that typically kick off a little more neutral each run have held on reasonable. You know, you've still been a little faster than them all the way at the end of a run. So I don't know that I would be super concerned right now. You just have managed the best you can. You've got a second and a half out front. Manage the best you can. He is uh, three and a half seconds now ahead of Stenhouse uh, right behind him and Larson closing on Kyle Busch. Okay, now we talk about 19, the leader of the race. Yep. Very easy to be out there leading this race and get complacent, exactly. not make those adjustments and keep up to this racetrack, Carl. Yeah, you know, the atmospheric conditions haven't changed. Sun's out, track's hot, but the track has been rubbering in. And I saw that yesterday during practice and qualifying. It seemed to change quite a bit. I'm very curious what exactly that 19 car is struggling with because it's what you said. You're complacent because you've been leading all day and then you get behind. Hearing him on that radio talk about being tight, 
And I think that's exactly what you saw when Chastain passed him. He had to lift way out of the gas, up off of two, keep from knocking that wall down again, down in three and four. The rest is history. And he said on the radio, the difference is now that the track has taken rubber. His car's handling completely differently. Exactly what Carl just said. This is this is normal Darlington Raceway uh, uh, events that are happening. Keeping up with this racetrack. You heard Larry tell us. He told us that very thing before the race happened. Keeping up with this racetrack. They may be making adjustments in those pits every single time. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Third place side by side here. Kyle Busch. And. Uh, so everybody's getting tighter. Seems like everybody's getting tighter with the rubber coming down, Carl. The one that keeps marching to the front is that five car, Kyle Larson. He's the only one out there that we heard on that radio talking about being loose. I can tell you, I've never followed somebody who can do the things that he could do in a stock car. So if there's anybody that's going to go find the grip, he's going to buy. It'd be the guy who goes and does it. And he's also the kid because of that talent. He can hold on to that looser race right. car. The, yeah. We saw it last weekend at Kansas Speedway. Man, that thing was out from underneath <laughs> him lap after lap. Unbelievable. Well, when they last pitted 25 laps ago, Ross Chastain was 5.0 seconds behind at North Wilkesboro for the NASCAR All-Star Race. Was up there Wednesday for an open house. Just hats off to everybody involved. Everybody. And I mean it took everybody to get that thing revived from a vision. When they started talking about that, Carl, we, my dad and I rode up there on our motorcycles to pull in there and look at it. I'm like, there's no chance you're going to revive this place. Boy, was I wrong. It's so exciting. And, uh, yeah. Is it, and, okay, so I've been watching Chastain. It looks like Truex is catching him a little bit, and there's a ton of traffic in front of him. I think this is going to get real exciting here in a couple laps. Jamie gives us an update. And Justin Marks is the team owner for Trackhouse. You guys have the track position now. Bicker is doing their job. What is the strategy now with 123 laps to go? Well, one of the really great things about NASCAR racing is how loud it is. So I couldn't really hear anything <laughs> you asked me, but I think you said strategy. It's always it's always great to be able to be in a strategic position when we leave the race. Obviously, we've got a really, really fast one light express NPS number one car for us. And, you know, he drove up there to the lead on his own. So now it puts us in a position where we can sort of control the race a little bit and sort of watch what everybody else is doing. So that's just, it's the best spot to be in, honestly. Uh, everybody at Trackhouse has been working so hard. I know that uh, Daniel got a speedy penalty early. He's got a fast car, too, and they're trying to get work where they can get, uh, you know, get back up there. And this pit crew, they are lights out awesome. The 99 and the 1, these guys, they have fun, and they're super fast. And um, we're all just living the dream at Trackhouse. It's so great to be here on the back weekend. And, Hopefully we can we can win at one of the most iconic NASCAR tracks. Justin Marks' this track house team, Mike, they just do things differently down here, trying to get their first win of the season with Ross. Been over a year since Ross Chastain's been. Last April, as a matter of fact, since he's been in victory lane, hard to believe. Well, he's coming up to lap Daniel Suarez, his teammate. Suarez was a top five car until he had a speeding penalty leaving the pits back at lap 38. Here's the, la the line you were talking about, Carl, right along with Martin Truex. Yeah, so you're on the throttle, on the throttle. He's looking for clean air right here, hits the patch, tons of grip. Don't spin the rear tires off the of turn two. Then you come barreling down here. You can't see the entry. You just slide in here. You're looking for your spot. Not too close to the wall, but you know there's grip up there, but don't get tempted. Looking <laughs> for clean air. And right now, breathing down his neck, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, the top four separated by only two seconds. What I saw right there is the difference in this new car versus the old. Carl, I would have, you know, rode the wall a little bit instead of diamond him off of that. That shows yep. you that that uh, wake, if you will, the car in front of it. They cannot be in that wake whatsoever. He elected to go down low, diamond that corner up off, trying to stay underneath of him. And more shifting opportunities. So you can pinch the car a little bit more and maybe still have some power to come off the corner. but. I really am excited to see the end of this run. I know we've only got uh, how many laps? 11, 11 to, to go. go. But this traffic, I really feel like, is going to be a factor. And in the final stage, I think that's that could play a, a huge role in the outcome. Nice shots from the Toyota cam and the driver's eye on board Martin Truex here in second place. And the top four are closing up. Truex now just half a second back. Kyle Busch 1.2, Kyle Larson 2.5. As you'll watch from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. They power every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Do you get a set of tires? They're great. I do, Carl. Great I'm tires. Very I mean, yeah. upset with that. In fact, I, I couldn't have said it better, Mike. 
Thanks. I'll give you the script next time. Thank you. I'd You're love to do that. Did yeah. you see how close our guys are racing to that wall in three and four? They, Unbelievable how close they are. I don't know about you, Clint, but when I you, you watch these guys go down the back straightaway, when I would drive into three and four, it's like I knew there might be some grip up there, but you have to decide, man, am I going to risk it? It's slide really job. difficult. They're a perfect slide job. Coming from a dirt racer, Christopher Bell, textbook, slid right up in front of oh. Stenhouse, took his line. See how he got tight in the yep. wake of that car? Now here comes Kevin Harvick behind him, going to make that pass as well, capitalizing on that. Free pass right there, Carl. You're up. Harvick up to eighth, Stenhouse back to ninth. I'm still super impressed with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and company. Yep. Man, fantastic job. Top 10 all day long. Great car. Stenhouse has more, run more laps in the top 10 today than in all of his previous 14 races here combined. <laughs> Good job, Ricky. Just a dirt racer. Did it the hard way. Having a great day. Now Tyler Reddick anchors the top 10. Here comes Blaney looking for some stage points on the inside. Oh, oh he got oh, I, oh man. I think Blaney may have got into him. We're gonna have to watch that back, Carl, but I think Blaney got into him. I heard his throttle get yeah. out of the get out of the gas, and you could tell that he was in the wall. I think I heard some of those crunching noises that are terrible to hear here. So Blaney. Little crossover with Blaney. Slides up. Yeah. Squeezed oh. him pretty hard. Yeah, he just he definitely misjudged that. Well, eight work better than four. <laughs> well, unless you're running good years and then four, just fine. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, that's a that's not good. Now the leaders have tightened up. Truex has come right back here with six to go in stage two, looking for another stage win. He liked that lead more, and that's playoff points are so important. That's why you see these guys. One more opportunity. Look at these lappers yeah. side by side. And those lappers are going to be racing hard trying to stay on that lead lap. That'll be difficult for Chastain. One of them being his teammate. Huge run down the back straightaway from the 19. Suarez in the 99, the green and white car is still the last car on the lead lap. See Chastain a little bit loose getting into three. There. Now Truex stays on the outside like I was talking about earlier. See if he can get that run. Race is on here. Playoff points, so important, Carl. Yep, dive it down into the corner, and Truex uh, chose that high line, maybe chose the high line. Running across the middle, just looks like he's really searching for clean oh, air. That car that was being lapped there. That's Josh Berry. I believe he got into the wall off. 48, turn. very hard. Hard impact in, into the wall right in front of your leaders. Look who's sneaking in the picture. Kyle Busch. And Kyle Larson. They have Ooh. run them down. Four to go. Took a long time to get there. But this as is soon the as they got into those lap traffic, Carl. That was the difference maker. Yeah, this is the this is Darlington. This is where it gets exciting. These guys know they only have three to go. They get to race hard for this stage win. Chastain's got away from him again, but there's still three lappers ahead. Suarez being the closest. Uh, Suarez's biggest fan right now is Ryan Priest, who is the first car one lap down, and we get the free pass if things stay as they are. One of Chastain's strong suits was getting into three. He really could dive that car in harder than most, and I think that's went away. Starting to get loose into three, and you see Tru uh, Truex behind him capitalizing on that. Truex is really just trying anything he can. I mean, that, it's an unorthodox line there. I know some guys have been doing that, looking for grip. Maybe that's part of his solution to the track rubbering in problem that Truex was having. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. See how much he closed yep. in in turn three? Chastain's kind of in a window there. Can't overdrive that thing anymore. Loose getting in where Ch uh, Truex was able to really dive that thing in. And whatever Chastain's struggling with, he can't get closer to his teammate Suarez there. He's just unable to close that, close up that gap. One more lap to finish off stage two. If he can put some pressure on him getting into three. Force him to get loose might be the ticket here. Yes. He's close enough, Carl. Yes, he is. Both of them. Look oh, at that. That's exactly. Oh. Oh. And around goes oh. Truex. Not that much pressure. Still. Oh. Can he keep it going? He's going to spin around. Oh my gosh. Caution waves to end the stage. We'll watch the replay. I don't think anyone hit anything too hard, but man, what? that's terrible. So Chastain gets the stage win. He hit the wall pretty hard. That one Did, car hit one the wall car pretty it. hard. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, William Byron, Keselowski. Well, the pressure's on. It's like I was saying, the opportunity's here. Playoff points on the line. 
Got into the corner just like we were talking about. Chastain saw him coming. You think these guys aren't digging for everything they've got? Well, he was. That was awesome. Don't stop driving that hot. Here's Martin Truex's view of the last lap, stage two. Studio Shannon and Jamie here. What a way to end stage two. But Jamie, I know you have your eyes on the guy who finished in last uh, yesterday's race first. That, of course, is Kyle Larson. Yeah, Kyle Larson's had an up and down day. Started seven. Looked like he was going to have a car that could drive it to lead. But right here on lap 39, you see he comes in. The jack doesn't fall. The car doesn't fall the jack. The jack just goes down. He has to go back, jack the car, get the tire back on. Kyle Larson fell all the way back to 28, Shannon. But look at him go. I mean, he was passing cars on the top, on the bottom. And he's moved all the way up the third place at the end of stage two. I think he's the guy to beat right now. Yeah, of course, we know how big that win was for him yesterday to make it two in a row at Darlington. What a day it would be for the five team. Uh, throwback weekend. Let's throw it back to you, Mike Joy. <laughs> Thank you. We're getting ready for pit stops here at the end of stage two. And let's listen in to some of the radio in that final lap. Larry Mack, what did your data tell you about those? Uh... I went easy behind Daniel so long. I feel like I never used the front. Uh... Larry, what did your data tell you about those two drivers entering turn three? Yeah, the, everybody was off the brake. They were down in the middle of turns three and four. All three of them were completely off. But when Ross got right in the middle of three and four, whether it's because he got loose or he lost the nose, he had to get on the brakes and got on them real hard right there. I saw the rear end wiggle just at least a little bit, just a little, but the, and, and he, that's when he got on the brakes, slid up the racetrack. Um, I, that's hard racing. That's real Caught me hard off racing. guard. Yeah, Caught those guys off guard, but that's that's as hard as this. That's I think that's how you call that. That's Darlington, and he, Ross said he didn't expect those fronts to have that grip because of the you know how easy he had been on them. So this racetrack can get you a number of ways. So Truex will be 10th entering pit road. He got the final stage point. Uh, Ryan Priest will get the free pass as the leaders come to pit road. Regan. Kyle Busch started off that last run with just a little bit too much splitter contact. Team asked him if he could handle a little bit more. He said yes, but not much more. Race car got too loose as he got to the end of the run. Wanted a little adjustment for that. And the five car, Kyle Larson, was turning better, especially early on, but way too loose at the end of that run. Jamie. Ross Chastain picks up his fifth stage win of the year. You saw that contact. He said the good news is he hit square, so he thinks everything is all right. The wheel is straight. And the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., he said if Ross would have just run his line and stopped worrying about blocking all the time, we would have been fine. So a little bit of damage on the 19, but they think they are okay as well with the four-tire stop here. Thanks, Jamie. That's close. Man, very close. Larson to the point. How about it? Got him, Carl. Wow, this is falling into Larson's hands. So plus two for Kyle Larson as he gets off pit road first. Here's the video. Barely. Wow. About six inches uh, was the difference there. So stage two is in the book. Ross Chastain, the leader, Carl. Delighted to have you back. <laughs> Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me here, yeah. both of you. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks to Fox, all the fans for NASCAR, bringing all of us guys out here. This has been a, a lot of fun. I can't wait to watch the end of the race. Man, so glad to see you again. It's been a while. Carl, always, always good competitors. Had a lot of fun on and off the racetrack. <laughs> yes. A lot of stories there, but uh, always good to see you, buddy. Glad cool. you're here. Thanks again, everybody. All right, don't be a stranger now. All right, that's a deal. Thanks. A champion, Winston Million winner, certainly one of NASCAR's top 75 drivers. Uh, and joining us, and with a little skin in the game, uh, your son Chase here, uh, running well, trying to get himself uh, up in a position to win. His position right now matches his car number. <laughs> Maybe nine wasn't the best number to pick, but hey, it's got a great family history, and thank you for being with us. Well, I'm a little prejudiced, so I'm definitely for him. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. That's okay. well, I think your timing's right. He's <laughs> slowly starting to march to the front. Old Bill, also uh, Bill gets up here, and there he is in the top ten. Well, we'll pull for him. <laughs> Richard Petty talked in the first stage about racing this racetrack and uh, here you had such great success here and of course Chase has been coming to this racetrack for a long long time uh, before he actually got a chance to race here it was after you had done all your winning here. Well you know everybody asked me about my favorite racetrack or which one I like to race at and this would have to be one of my favorites. Yeah. I just enjoyed the racetrack I enjoyed the challenge of this racetrack. 
and especially early on in the early years it's just it was just so much fun to to race the competitors but to, you had to race the racetrack all day long so, so the, the Winst- throwback sorry, sorry. The, the winston million was four races and you won the first two daytona and talladega and then you missed charlotte but you weren't worried you still had a chance here well, I had won the ra- I had sat on a pole and won the race here in the spring, and we took that particular car and put it up, put it all back together and brought it back here. So I knew I had a good chance, but I won the best car that day, but I did miss Charlotte. That's right. But you did win the million. But I did win the all million. All right. So the throwback. Chase is honoring his dad. Pretty cool throwback. Look at the shirt you have on. That's oh, from it. that year, right? Ray Everham, Dodge. How, what else could you ask for? Pretty cool. And it still fits. Here we come, <laughs> Bill. Coming to the green. Let's see what all that right. kid can do. Coming to the Geico restart zone, Kyle Larson had a 9.6 second pit stop, his second fastest of the year for Cliff Daniel and crew. That's put him up front against Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, William Byron, Harvick, Keselowski, Bell, Truex, Elliott, and Reddick, the top 10 as we go back to green. I see a new guy to the top. Eh, we'll see when we get to turn one here. Chastain's holding strong on that bottom. Race is on off of two. Oh, Trouble they got back one straight away. They're piled up. It's the big one on the back straight. Saw Eric Jones around sideways, a bunch of them. Sendrick, McDowell, Austin Dillon, Ryan Newman around. Suarez, man. Hits keep coming for him. Only the fourth caution of the day. Heavy damage for Austin Dillon there with the left front, probably into their day. Uh, Ryan Newman involved in it. Daniel Suarez. Somebody's Uh-oh. lost the wheel. That could be trouble. That could be the reason. I'd say that's the reason for the caution. All right, Jones on pit road already. And now Michael McDowell down pit road. Does that car doesn't have a right rear tire on it? That's exact. That was the car that I saw sideways. No right rear tire. That's exactly what happened. Wheel fell off. Some vacations going on there. So what watch the, the petty blue wheeler. car. There he goes. You see it come off right there. He's sideways. See the wheel fall down on the right rear. Collected them all. You're going to see it roll off. And we'll watch it from the Ford camera on board Chase Briscoe. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Check up hard, check up hard, watch for debris, check up hard, one outside, one outside, just keep watching, clear to the wall, clear to the wall. Great job, Chase Briscoe, great job, spotter. Told him low first, low was closed up, check up, check up hard. Watch that right rear wheel, you can see it. Tires down already. Costly air for not only his team, a lot of others. Cindric and Dylan to the pits and more. Fourth caution flag of the day, Eric Jones sideways off turn number two, loses a wheel, we're under yellow. on FS1. We're under caution for the fourth time today with 96 laps to go. And let's show you why the lead is where it is as of the moment of caution. There the caution lights lit up with Kyle Larson just barely ahead of Ross Chastain. Um, They go back of course to the last scoring loop crossed before the caution. Look at the two behind them. Bush and Byron. And they will line up in that order. Here are the nine drivers involved in that crash, which began with Eric Jones. Took them a long time to get a new wheel on the right rear and get it properly seated uh, with the single center lock nut. Let's take a look at today's race summary sponsored by Mother's Polishes. 197 laps complete. Kyle Larson is one of five leaders today. Martin Truex led the most laps, 145. There have been nine lead changes. We still have 22 cars on the lead lap as of that caution. The fourth one of the day. Truex and Chastain were the uh, stage winners. 
And it looks like most of the leaders will stay out uh, with pit road opening up here coming to to the line for lap 198. 96 laps to go in Darlington. Action a plenty. Outside to turn four, what is now turn four, originally turn two, that gives this track its unique egg shape. And there are the Darlington stripes. We've lost count. Jamie. Well, Jimmy Johnson, one of the owners of Legacy Motor Club, and you just saw the last incident with Eric Jones. What did you see happen there, Jimmy? We're missing a wheel and tire <laughs> that seemed to make things a little tricky for Eric over there off of two. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, that wheel came off and collected some other cars, including the 42. But uh, the guys were doing a great job, and Eric had been, you know, holding steady there in the top 15 most of the day, and an unfortunate kind of end to, uh, to a good run for us. How about for you? What's it like sitting up on top of the pit box, not being able to control anything or be in the race car? I feel so helpless. Um, it's, it's just such a different experience to be watching. It gives me a greater perspective of uh, just all the engineering that goes into it and strategy that's required. And I certainly en enjoyed being behind the wheel a lot more than I do sitting on the pit box, but that's where I am these days. Congratulations to you. You're one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. Thank you. So such an honor. Appreciate it. And Jimmy Johnson fans, he'll be back in the race car in two weeks at Charlotte. Mike? How about that? How about uh, this one? Yep. Daniel yep. Suarez joins um, Austin Dillon out of the, the race garage after this one. It's pit road speeding penalty, Bill. So many penalties, mistakes make the difference in this sport. And oh, absolutely. That's all. That's the whole deal in this sport. And here's uh, some Kyle Larson radio. What was Ross's balance to end that second stage? I was very adamant to not pass the 99 and put the 99 a lap down. So I'm just not sure, you know, how hard he was going loose to me. He looked loose. I don't know that he said that. Well, never mind. We, we found it. He did say he was building too loose at the end of the run. Okay. That's what I saw. Exactly what Cliff Daniels just told him. Building Good information. Yep. Heads up thinking, forward thinking. Kyle Larson. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. 92 laps to go. Still inside. Still there. Still there. Man, he's Still pushing there. him real high, Bill. Just that like last low. week when Ross Chastain said, I gave him just enough room for his race car. That's just what he did again at turn two. And that's all it was. Good racing. Important spot. This clean air is so important. Still door to door. Here comes Kyle Busch. A little bit of help from the back. Man, he's got him high. Here comes Kyle oh, Busch. Here comes William Byron on the inside of Busch. Byron capitalizes. Bush has the run off the high side in the corner. Keselowski in a crossover, two for one pass, getting in at one. We got it sorted out. Kevin Harvick, Christopher Bell. And all this on the edge of control at 165 miles an hour. Here comes this is not Truex. play. Trying to get back up there. Fast race car, led a lot of laps early. Hard to believe he spun out and only in what battling for 10th place right here with your boy, Bill. Yeah, doing a good job. But you know, every time you get buried in the pack here, it's just so hard to maintain track position. How about improved track position? Here comes Chase. Back at him. Back even. I'm gonna try to work here, stall. Quarter bumper clear. Man, First and Bush. second, third and fourth. We're side by side entering three. Just like we saw for that stage in, Bush took a real hard dive at Chastain getting into three. Seems like Chastain, just like we heard him talk about on the radio, building a little bit loose. What is his strong suit passing every every car I saw, Bill? That was he was pushing it hard getting into three. Now a little bit reluctant getting in there. Tells me he's a little loose over there. Yeah, he's been able to really drive it in the corner both ends, uh, three and one from everything I've seen. He's kind of status quo up off, but really good getting down in the corner early on. 
Chevrolets one through four with Christopher Bell, the first Toyota in fifth. Keselowski, the first Ford in sixth. Denny Hamlin went into turn three, the last lap three wide. Rarely do you get to do that at Darlington and see the exit at turn four. Chase looking for ninth place. Yeah, I don't know if it didn't hurt Truex's car just a little bit when he spun down there. It, you know, it's just hard to tell. You know, these things are so equal. Well, I, I can say this. He was trending tight. That's why he lost that top spot, Bill. Um, said it on the radio, got tight as the track was rubbering in. Obviously, they probably made an adjustment according so. But if that baby was tight out there in clean air, it's going to be even tighter oh, back there in the track. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how was Carl's perspective on things? Well, it was good. You know, it's just like riding a bike, uh, picked up right, went straight to the lap times, straight to call in a race, straight behind the wheel. Need to hear him. Uh, man, you want to talk about just picking up and leaving. Nobody's <laughs> seen him. Nobody in the industry has seen him since 2016. Here he is. And showed I, up. And I got the sense that he missed it more than he thought he would if and when he ever came back. I think he knew it. I think that's why he didn't come yeah. back. And he finally was forced to come back with his 75th anniversary deal, got here and liked what he felt. Yeah. I think he felt the love. He felt, uh, um, you know, the, the passion that people had for, for following him and, and um, you know, was a fan of his. And I think he felt it all day long. Yeah, it's hard to give up that time span, though. You know, he was in pretty much the prime of his career. You know, you just kind of, for so, whatever reason, gave it up, you know, and then, you know, but everybody's got their reason. Spinner oh. down on the apron, turn three. It was one of those UPS cars. It was Stenhouse. Oh, Stenhouse, such a good day. That'll put the some left rear down, left rear flat. Fifth caution of the day. Well, it's Darlington starting to eat him up. Now, he was already on the apron. May have been trying to get to pit road. I'd say he was trying to nurse this left rear. You see, just like you yeah. said, way down off the racetrack, finally spun. Got a caution here. Changes things, Larry. Yes, sir, but we will be coming because now we've run about 10 laps. Now we're working this into a making a one stop in this last stage. So I think you'll see them. It'll be feeding time, trust me. Yeah, everybody was planning on that two stop strategy in stage three. It is an Omaha. <laughs> Larry, how many sets of new tires you have left? Uh, we're in good sh shape, Mike. Uh, we still got about half of what we started with. You, we've used five sets, made four pit stops, so five including what we started on. Good shape on tires. Well, that's good. Smoke them if you got them. That's good because we're not done having cautions. Absolutely not. Saw that at Kansas. Right. Cruise around there, green flag, nothing happened. All of a sudden, holy cow, once they started cautions, and I think you're going to see that. Everybody knows how hard these positions are to come by on green flag conditions. These restarts are going to ratchet up. Just saw it on the last one. And I thought that one car did what he needed to do. Didn't leave him much room. Crowded him pretty hard, but you're going to see more of that. But this is Darlington. Oh, yeah. You run out of rid yeah. All of it Absolutely. off of two. Absolutely. Absolutely. It all happens off of two on these restarts run out of real estate that track it's barely wide and people don't it's hard to see this from from the the camera angles but when you're rolling around there under caution it really is door to door when you come off of there if, if both cars are on the racing surface there's hardly room for two cars to go by there door to door off of two and up our left our fox race tracker pretty pretty easy the first part of the race but here we are in stage three important pit stop to picked up Regan. Well, Kyle Busch, good when we started that run right there. Liked his car initially, but then he got in the wake of the one car, said it was really tight. A little bit of a discussion on whether they want to adjust for that or not. He thinks it's going to be very good on the long run. And Kyle Larson struggling on that restart just a little bit as he lost the track position. The plan was to try and save the tires and get him as the run went on. Jamie? Christopher Bell in the 20, driven from 16th up to the top five, and that's no surprise. He ran great in both races here last year. He's actually the first driver I heard say he feels good. Ross Chastain with a little bit of help. They're adding wedge this time around. Chastain pulled right out to the outside lane to hold back both Kyle Busch and William Byron. Saw it with Larson, saw the 10, 10 second stop, the nine seconds. Byron had a good stop up one, Busch. Held steady there. 
81 laps to go in Darlington County, South Carolina. Harvick and Truex, Elliott and Blaney. Well, all of the drivers right at the front of the field have already visited Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane this season. Nine drivers in all. There's the list. Who will join them today? See what, yeah, it's interesting, Bill. Chastain, we just saw what he did with the five car, right? Utilizing that bottom, he took the outside. Let's see what Kyle Busch can do. Here's some Kyle Busch radio. All right, no matter what you choose here, don't let him do you into doing stupid here. we got a good car. we got a car that can win. Let him dictate his own end of this race. Don't let him dictate what we do. Good reminder, huh, Bill? Absolutely. Good, good advice. It's still a long way to go. I mean, he's still got a lot of time to do a lot of different things. You know, I still don't know if Ross has a long-term run car versus what Kyle's got. Kyle's got a pretty good car. I'm liking this Christopher Bell. I see him. I see Harvick. Those guys, Keselowski, man, what a good day he's having. Green flag. Here's some Kyle Larson spotter audio. Tyler Munn. And I got interesting quick, didn't it, Bill? Oh, absolutely. Eight was pushing hard on that Chastain. Stacked them all up. Larson had to bail out of the gas. Truex Harvick, the first side-by-side -side battle, and they're pretty well stacked up behind them. Now Keselowski to the inside on Christopher Bell. This is for fifth. Uh, yeah, I don't think Brad can get it done. Uh, he might, but it's going to be tight. Christopher's been good. I've watched him most all day. He's he's been done a, done a really good job. Harvick got a great run on those two when they were side by side in turn two, and so did Chase Elliott. They closed right up, but here in the middle of three and four, they are still going at it for fifth place. Now you got Blaney and Truex running too deep. Have to get this sorted out, and they did right there. I was going to say two cars side by side is going to enable whoever's behind them to capitalize that was Harvick and he was coming. Yeah Truex looks tight now looks like his car is not in especially in traffic. Logano so on the move. I think it was a combination it was kind of trending that way anyway got in trouble got in a chassis at the end of that man that was so close to Chase Elliott oh. the back of Logano. He used up his front bumper there. Looks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chase, Chase gets stacked tight. up in yeah. two, and Ryan Blaney's right on him. So is Truex. Truex to the inside. Eight in the wall. Kyle Busch has hit the wall off the two. Running second. Here's a look. Right there. Button off the two is right in the middle of the corner, Bill. Wow. So overcooked the corner at least a little bit. Slid up, got into it. It's still Darlington. <laughs> Bush falls to fourth after this. I hear the one and the five. This is one tough racetrack, though. I Turn mean, three he, car in the wall. They had a bit of bumping and scraping, and Ty Gibbs got the worst of it. He had already been in the wall as part of that carnage when Eric Jones spun around. He had contact from someone, couldn't see who, but got him against the fence and and then you keep going that happens so frequently here Bill you get that Darlington stripe whether it's from contact or not um, how you feel about rolling off into the next corner at full speed you got to do what you got to do but I will say with a new car in this body it does make it easier to get into the wall or two years ago the older car you pretty much cut a tire down. Well, I think you're seeing it right there. Absolutely. Kyle Busch is coming right back to the bumper of the five, trying to make a move on him. Yes, two years ago, to your point, yeah. Bill Elliott, that car would have been out. It would have been on pit road fixing Absolutely. the fenders because it Absolutely. is going to cut a tire down. Still diving into the corner very hard into turn three. Hard to pass out here today. Yeah, and it's just going to get worse as the, as the day goes on. Now Denny Hamlin back at 20th place. He just went past Justin Haley who was the free pass car on that last caution 
And it took him three or four laps to get there and complete the pass. Haley trying to come back, but nothing there. So Hamlin back into the top 20. Yeah, when he earlier in the race had fluid on the racetrack, he slid up and got into the wall pretty good in the three and four. I can't help but to think, Bill, that that hurt that car. This is a favorite driver at the Darlington racetrack. Anytime you're talking about managing tires, you think Denny Hamlin. He's in that conversation and just not in the cards today. Yeah, Danny's been very masterful here. He's done a great job. And, yeah, I would agree with you 100%, Clint. Clint, I think that really hurt his car. All right, let's look at today's guaranteed fit at Darlington, sponsored by in the middle of turn number two. Here's what he had to say about that. Plowing. Well, it was loose. He got no, a little graphical there. Yes. Well. You know, I'm kind of glad I'm up here looking at it from this this advantage, you know, this vantage point. <laughs> Larry, how long before we're looking at uh, green flag pit stops, do you think? Yeah, Mike, with going back to racing with 78 laps to go, I think this turns this into a one-stop strategy right now. We go back racing at lap 215, again, 78 laps to go. I'm going to say somewhere around lap 250, we're going to start seeing them hit pit road, a little before splitting it absolutely in half. Okay. Jamie, how about an, uh, an update on the younger of the Elliots in today's race? Yes, Chase Elliott's had his work cut out for him all weekend long. Started 21st up to 9th. And I talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, and he said it's been interesting. The tire that Goodyear has brought here, this right side, we've run at three previous races, including last week at Kansas. And Alan said it has changed how Chase has to drive this track. It's changed how they have to set up this race car. So it's taking a little longer to hit his stride to get there at the end. I just thought that was interesting how sensitive these Drivers can be to a change in a tire. Thanks, Jamie. There's a look at uh, the Bill Elliott scheme on the Everham Dodge. That little, uh, those little arrows sticking out at the top right of the nine. That's the E for Everham uh, in that one. And, uh, and of course, shirts to match. And shirts to match. Yep. Those My are some good years, weren't they, Bill? Man, those oh, cars absolutely. were so fast. Ray did an awesome job. I mean, that was so much fun driving for him those three years. I mean, I was I was about at the end of my career, mid, you know, early 40s. You know, where was I going to go? And Ray comes to me and asks me, and I'll never forget. He said he comes up, sends word, uh, sends word by somebody that he wants to talk to him. So I go over to his truck. He comes right there and he tells me, I want to I want you to come drive my race car. And I think I fell over in the floor because I said, <laughs> me, my age, you know, there's a lot of younger guys. And he said, no, and, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went and did it. I had a three great years with him and enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, I mean, it's almost, it reminds me of Mark Martin, right? When we, towards the end of his career, matched up with Rick Hendrick in that five car and, and lit it up. And uh, what a match you had in that nine. I remember that was when I was coming into this sport and you were lights out fast every week. 62 laps to go in the South Carolina count. Front side. That's all I'm going to say. That fried bologna sandwich. Woo, that baby looks good. But. <laughs> There's a big butt coming. <laughs> 57 to go. Ross Chastain half a second in front of William Byron. Look how close that is, huh? The top four are all Chevrolets. Christopher Bell, the first Toyota in fifth. Brad Keselowski still the first Ford in sixth. There's the uh, monster cam on board Tyler Reddick. It's hard to explain to somebody, Bill. I always find it challenging what it feels like to be right up against that wall. That last little buffer, whether it's the air in between that car and the wall literally pushing you off of it, but there's just a little bit of grip. That last inch. You know, I never you found it. it. I was either <laughs> off of it or in it. <laughs> That's the challenge about this racetrack. We show it, already shows us great shots um, as, as good as you can. But that feeling, that little bit of buffer, the side bite, the last dis inkling of, of side bite you have to keep that car out of that wall, 
um, the ones that can find it and it t it comes into the balance you have to have a good balance on your car not too tight not too loose because the second you are you're going to be into it it's like Bill talked about but that is a very very hard thing to to master at a track like Darlington plus you add in you know they what they lost almost two feet with a soft wall Save for Barry, versus yes. when I ran here in back in the days so the only thing soft when you ran here was that bologna burger. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. you got a good point there. Uh, Michael McDowell released from the infield care center, getting checked out one of the nine cars involved in that pileup at lap 194. In the last 27 races here, only twice have we had a caution with nine or more lap uh, cars involved in it. So it doesn't happen often. But that was right on a restart and right out of turn two. Yeah, but that was a freak, kind of a freak day. When you lose a tire, it's kind of, you know, it ain't really on anybody other than just a mistake by the team, you know. Larry, you tell me, 250. All right, we're 240, 10 to go, 10, 15 laps before we start seeing these green flag stops. Somebody going to short pit this a little bit? You, do you take that gamble? Oh, I think they will, Clint. I think that's a big key. Splitting it in half is about lap 254, 255. So I definitely think once we cross over 248, 249, that's when that window opens. And you know, when someone comes, you can't be far behind. You're just giving up two, two plus seconds a lap. Just like we've seen all day long, the opportunity. It, when does it come? It comes with these lappers. Now you see Byron. You saw that maneuver with Larson behind him. Navigating around that lap traffic. That race for the lead is narrowing up. P.J. McLeod's taking his car to the garage area. We want to thank Goodyear for everything they've done this weekend, including our aerial coverage, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Even they got behind the throwback scheme with the tires. Every yep. tire out here, cool-looking race cars, white letters on a Goodyear's. I like what I see here. Talking about coming into green flag pit stops. This is going to put the pressure on the teams, the performance, getting on a pit road. That stop itself, with those cars being that close on that racetrack, that's going to make the difference, maybe, between who wins this race and who doesn't. Here's Jamie on the leader. Well, it's interesting. A lot of the drivers behind Ross saying that they're tight. Ross Chastain just now said he's three or four loose. And it's interesting listening to his radio because he ran the truck race, the Xfinity race this weekend, and he took some mental notes of how the track changed and what it did and what to look for, especially on that high side. Also, his pit crew, they pitted for Kyle Larson in the Xfinity Series race yesterday. And you know what happened there, Mike? They went to victory lane. They are on it. And there's the crew, not quite at the get ready uh, for green flag stops, but Ryan Priest is in now. He was a lead lap car, and we're starting to see others like Josh Berry that were toward the tail end of the lead lap starting to come in. Logano, here comes Logano, 22. That's one that you're going to see some short pit and try to capitalize on this. Regan. Joey Logano working to get that car tightened up the majority of the day. This last run, the biggest concern was some wall contact with the right rear. They're going to check that for him while they get the four tires. Now, Logano had just made it up into the top 15 after being like a 20 to 20 second place car much of the day. Here we this? go for the lead. And don't look now, but Larson's right there, too. Be careful, Byron. You get those two cars side by side. Mike created two for one opportunity, Bill. Race is on, baby. Yeah, no doubt. Free Chevy slugging it out for the lead here with 47 to go. Kyle Larson. It's going to do it. Completes that pass for second. Here comes the 20. At this time. Christopher Bell and Larson's going to pit. Or is he? Oh, he missed it. No, no, he didn't. Still has it. He made it. Whoo, that was close. Inside the orange box, that's where you have to be to commit to pit road. Regan. Kyle Larson in the five car started too tight on that run, but they were okay with that. They figured it would cycle through and get good for him as the run went on. Same thing for this run. They're planning to carry it out for a little while longer. And the eight car of Kyle Busch, his race car, you heard him say it was just plowing. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski making his way into the pit box. Been really good. A really good day for him. Just building free earlier in the run. Adjusting for him, you see Christopher Bell on the right side. Christopher really happy with that 20 car. Regan, William Byron. 
Boyer and Brian are another one of those race cars and it's just too tight right now. It started to run tight, stayed tight the whole time for William. Jamie. Ross Chastain, remember, his pick crew has been on it. His crew chief told me he loves pitting because these guys get it done. I don't want to jinx him saying that, but they've been good. He was too loose. We're going to tighten him up just a bit. A four-tire stop here for Chastain. Kevin now they're off. They're off that pit road. Keep an eye on this five. You look at the track map on the top of your screen. He's coming off the of four. He's going to get him. Going to get him easy. There it is. You see Chastain coming off. That's the benefactor of that short pit. Did a great job. And look, Christopher Bell's right in tow with him. So as we cycle through the rest of these green flag stops, that is where it will settle out among those two. And look where Logano gained. Logano's right there behind them. That might be short lived. That's three or four laps ahead for them. Haven't heard any penalties. That's great stops. Big difference maker there, Bill. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> you know, but watching Truex early in the race, when he had the lead, clean air, he was good. And now he's kind of buried in traffic, and he's kind of status quo. So Kyle Larson was third, three-tenths of a second difference, uh, and pitting one lap apart as Chase Elliott completes his stop. And but for the first four cars, Harvick, Blaney, Wallace, and Hamlin, we have cycled through. Kevin Harvick in. Regan. Kevin Harvick has been pretty good. The problem with Kevin Harvick's car is it takes 20 laps till it gets good for him. Otherwise, he doesn't want any changes. Ricky Stenhouse, too fast entering pit road. Very few penalties today, but they have been costly. Ryan Blaney again picks up the lead as uh, they stay out long on these green flag stints, but now he's headed for pit road. Bubba Wallace will become the race leader briefly. Tail end of who hadn't cycled, but hey, got to give a chance, uh, luck a chance to operate here, and that's exactly what Bubba Wallace and company is doing. So Wallace and Hamlin are the only two on the lead lap who have yet to make this stop. So Larry, here, he come. here comes He's them. But how could this benefit them, Larry? Yeah, the only way this works is if a caution comes out before they pit, then they're going to drag everybody to pit road with them under caution. So that's the only thing that would make this work. Man, quietly all day long, Christopher Bell just slowly but surely is inching into this picture. And here it comes, 39 to go in second. So it looks like one of the drivers who did not fare well on this round of green flag stops is William Byron. He was second when it started. He is now ninth after oh, pit wow. stops. Eleven and a half second stop for Byron was a, a large part of the difference. That's a second and a half in the pits. That looks pretty big out on that racetrack, doesn't it, Bill? It sure does. It's hard to make up on the racetrack, too. Here comes Chastain. Whoa, so close. Almost got in the back of Eric Jones, way high. Trying to make a move on Christian Rebell for second. That was a, a tough part of the corner to catch that lapper of yep. Eric Jones right there. So Denny Hamlin, the leader, but he has not been in the pits since uh, lap 212. Larson was in at 247, nine laps ago. There's Hamlin. Yeah, Gabe Hart, Chris Gabe Hart, his crew chief in Hamlin, they got something a lot of other drivers don't have. They got a win, which gives them a bigger playbook <laughs> to work with. They can run this thing long. That's a great point, Larry. Uh, all good out the back by Fedway. He's going to need some help. Yeah, they're, they're, hope, they're counting on a caution is what they're counting on, but to Larry's point, 
it's worth uh, with a win already in your belt. You're going for wins. Look at that graphic. Larson nine miles an hour quicker uh, than Denny Hamlin on worn tires. Only nine. Well, Larson's really gotten away from Bell in the last couple of laps. Nine miles an hour, Bill, but that's two seconds over the course of a lap. Well, I know. That's huge. Don't take long to add that up. Well, as long as you can stay in lap traffic, right? I mean, if yep. you're if you're Denny, you know, trying to manage where you're catching cars or they're catching you, more importantly, yeah. on yeah. tires, not losing time with them passing you. Eric Jones to pit road. Now, prior to the pit stop cycle, Denny Hamlin was 17th. So as Larry said, they, you know, they have a win in the bank, take their best shot, and for them, it's staying out long and running uh, to the end of his fuel load or until the tires just won't grip anymore. That's where he's been killing everybody all day long. It is just you guys it's talking about Ross Chastain in a rear view that you see behind him. Been very strong getting into the corners. Bill, you alluded to it earlier. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he drives it in and keep and maintains good speed. You got to give up, give and take. You know, at any racetrack, and usually if I'm good in, I'm bad off. It's hard to be both. 33 laps to go, another two or three before we expect uh, Hamlin on pit road. Yeah, it's all about getting the car rotated, right? You want to get into the corner and get the car rotated early as possible because that's when you can apply the throttle and get off the corner and make your speed, keep your momentum. Usually when you drive the car too hard getting into the corner, you just wait longer yeah. for the car to rotate. So here's Denny Hamlin coming to the line. And we'll show you the gap back to Kyle Larson. Yeah, they're going to need a caution very, very quickly. So when Hamlin pits, it will likely, he won't just lose the lead. He's likely going to lose the lead lap when he makes this stop. Well, again, it goes back to what Larry told us. Got to win here in your pocket. Um, I mean, it's it was go for it. We're going to push all the cars just in right here. See what happens. We were already a 17th place car. Can we make it a winning car? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so Larson's going to be your leader when Hamlin pits. Bell, Chastain, Bush have gotten pretty close here. Kyle Larson's a three-time runner-up here in the Cup Series. Won yesterday in Xfinity. Has yet to score a Cup win at Darlington. And here comes Hamlin. He will surrender the lead likely fall from the lead lap during this stop. We'll check it out when we come back, but you're not going to miss a thing. We're going to go Fox side by side with 30 laps to go in Darlington. William Byron went from second down to ninth, now back up to seventh. Yeah, he was definitely the one that stuck out the most to me. Not the best for the money stop for William Byron in the 24 car. Still 24 to go. I'm sure this Larry's going to have some sort of trend for us at the end of this thing. I remember it a year ago he told us this. Lo and behold, Bill, if you remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Payback time. That's right. Caught him. Couldn't believe he caught him. Now down at uh, 21st place, Denny Hamlin had that long run, hoping for a caution, did not get it, made his pit stop under green, and he is now the second car, one lap down. So effectively out of play for now. Didn't work. Nope. Speaking of trends, Larry. <laughs> Bill and Clint ask. I can deliver right here. <laughs> so right. what I did, I looked at the trends of the first 12 races in 2023. The average of the last caution is 21 laps to go, but the one that leaps off the page in 12 races, we've had five overtime finishes so far, and we are now 22 to go. If it doesn't work out, I'm done with the trends. <laughs> <laughs> Hendrick Motorsports leading. 
with Kyle Larson. And the last time they won here was 2012. Jimmy Johnson uh, gave Rick Hendrick his 200th win as a car owner. And none of their four active drivers had yet made a start in the Cup Series. They're uh, right now today going up for win number 296. There's that last victory. NASCAR's Mike Helton with Rick Hendrick and Jimmy. They've won at 26 different tracks since, 95 times, but it's been a while. At a bridesmaid. You said it three times a bridesmaid Kyle Larson's been. He's hungry. He was frustrated last weekend, wanted that one. Two times in a row, been knocked off at Kansas Speedway right there at the end. Kurt Busch a year prior, it was Denny Hamlin this year. He's wanting this Dar Darlington racetrack. This is the one that everybody wants to win. Well, Kyle got into him several years back, wasn't it? They came down. Here, yes. How is it? Kansas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And here. They got into it. Well, Larson's had a, a very busy eight days. Last week at Kansas. In it to win it on the final lap. Got loose in the corner. And then Denny Hamlin got against him, got into the wall, saved it for second place. And look at this. That's Kyle on the outside of John Hunter Nemechek. Hard racing on the final lap yesterday in the Xfinity race. Larson went to victory lane. And John Hunter, when they released him for the care center, he was laughing about it. And he said, hey, that's just good hard racing. All he can say is there's two. Got to spin off the floor. Somebody's around backwards. Ryan Newman. Oh, Newman, who was three laps right. down in no, about no, no. 27th in his return to NASCAR to drive five races this year for Rick Ware, has just brought out the sixth caution flag of the race with 18 laps to go. Well, Larry, <laughs> you're pretty close on you're the You're going to have to hold on to the trend one more week. I missed, about three, laps. I missed about three laps. He gets an attaboy. That is a break for Ty Gibbs. He'll be the free pass. Here's a look at it. Now what do we do, boys? Well, we're going to pit, and we're going to make sure that if my pit crew's the fastest, I need you now more than ever, guys. Like Larry says, we got lots of tires. We got lots of well, we got that. That's the easy part. The hard part's making sure you get them on there tight and faster than everybody else. Ryan Newman, welcome back. The Cup Series struggling a little bit. Bill, did you ever think we'd see a NASCAR where average good pit stops were below 10 seconds for four tires and gas. I thought below 20 was a half of our feet. 20? It was. <laughs> you don't remember way back, do you? <laughs> the jack was it probably was. at least, what was it? I mean, back in the day, jacks? Yeah. yeah. 22, 23 second stops. Yeah. I think it's open, green light, go. Here they come, guys. All right, lead lap cars. 19 of them. Here they come. Regan. Kyle Busch's car is too tight, turning into turn one right now. When he gets to the wall, he's good. He likes it through turns two. Turns three and four, though, that car is snug as well. And the five of Kyle Larson said the balance is good. It went just a little bit free at the end, but he likes it. Jamie? Seventh stop of the day. The 20 of Christopher Bell just needs a little bit more front turn there. The one of Ross Chastain in as well. They're going to free him up for this last run for this shootout, they told him, a four-tire stop. We saw the eight had to back up, but I see the five. There's a race, five in the 20. Larson's ahead of him, it looks like. You're going to see the race off just a little bit. Vange goes to Larson. Not going to like it if you're a Kyle Busch fan here. No nope, trouble on the right side. They had to lift it back up to get the uh, center wheel nut and the hub seated. How about Logano taking advantage of these last cautions and then Truex and Elliott plus four on both of those guys. Welcome to the party. Time is right. Martin Truex picking up four spots on that pit stop. Now he does have, he was the pole sitter, so he has the number one pit stall. That didn't hurt. About that nine crew, Bill. They did an awesome job. This is when it counts. This is this is the money deal right here. You know, you got to hang on for probably 15 laps here and hope for the best. Pay window Pay is window. open. <laughs> the question is, are we done having cautions? Is it will that be a check or cash? I don't care. <laughs> they all spend the same. Don't even care when it gets there. Just I'd make sure cash. It gets at least there. you can take it straight to the to the 
Boy, Boy I don't do very good with cash, Bill. If I if I take out of the house with some cash in my pocket, there's no chance I get home with it. <laughs> well, how about next Sunday on FS1? A million dollars is on the line as NASCAR returns to North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race. Wow. Cannot wait. The track that went away, and Bruton Smith said just let it go to the ground. Dale Earnhardt Jr. revived it for iRacing. Marcus Smith brought it back. He and Speedway Motorsports have done a fantastic job. Wait till you see the new, mostly old, North Wilkesboro next the week. The new old. Yeah. Uh, my mind's on this. What it was new. <laughs> my mind's on this choose rule. Um, Bill, we saw, you know, the five was on the bottom there. Or excuse me, five took the outside as the pole sitter. Chastain moved him up a little bit, did the right thing, and, and it was uh, right. It worked. Uh, where are you choosing here if you're five? Here are the five uh, up front drivers. I'd probably go to the inside. On uh, our restart ranks this season. On their restart performance. Because I. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I figure what's, what's going to happen. If five chooses the inside, 20 will go outside, Ross will go inside, and he'll try to put them three deep getting to turn one. Oh, you think Ross is going to go for the three wide? You Here's think? My thing. I think the preferred line has always been the outside. Once you get into that corner, one and two, and you can hold hey, them down. look at Christopher Bell. Well, there goes the 20. Uh-oh. They think they have a loose lug nut. You know who that puts door to door with you again? Exactly what we just saw. Now where do you go? Yeah, that 9-8 stop was just a little too quick they just had. If I'm the five, I'm going to return that favor. I'm going to put him on the outside and give him a little taste of his own medicine. That's what I was going to do. So now the first five are Larson, Chastain, Logano, there it Truex, is. and Chase Elliott. Logano. <laughs> there it is. How about Logano? What a turnaround. Two weeks in a row. Taking advantage of those cautions, putting them to good use. So we know on the restart, with Ross up high, the question will be if Kyle Larson can get into turn one even with Ross and keep him up and, you know, so he doesn't have many options up there in the corner, and then what will Logano, what will Logano do? Exactly what you saw. That's exactly what just happened. Now we're going to see if the five can do exactly what Chastain did to him. Yeah. Man, Ross has been so good rolling in the corner, though, especially three. Well, and he's, it's been on the bottom, kind of well, a dive bomb, yeah. if you will. So what I don't want to uh -oh. do is give him uh -oh. that Look at it. Whoa, whoa. House divided right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. She wants the one. He wants the five. There's a good chance they ain't going home together. <laughs> well, look who's third. Have Truex is back. Logano's right with him. Then Chase Elliott. Kozlowski, Reddick, Byron, Harvin. Last year's winner, Logano. That boy's capable of getting up on the wheel. It'll be 13 laps to go. <laughs> Strap on tight. Green flag. Man. Chastain. That was a Ooh. pretty good jump for the outside there, the second place car. Oh, Rick! Truex. Logano in the wall turns Truex. The wall. A oh, bunch man. of them here. This is the big one. Now Morello's around. Wow. Logano. And Truex got the worst of it. I think Larson was in the lead there. As they started into, into the corner, there was a little bit of contact between he and Ross. I mean, Truex is stuck, can't go, left rear tire down. Clearly, Larson was trying to keep uh, Chastain up as high as possible. Might have been, yep, a little contact right there. Follow along with Truex, stay on him. And Truex slides up into Logano, and there it goes. Just a little bit of squeeze. Look at the two in the lead, though. They're both in the wall. Don't forget that. Five gave it to him. That's exactly what I was talking about. Run him up. They both were in the fence. It might be easier to count the cars that were not involved on this restart with 13 lucky laps to go. Let's watch this again. Obviously, all a focus was on Truex and Logano. That was the wreck, but watch these leaders here. I think he gave him a little 
dose of the old medicine there, moved him up the racetrack, and it definitely got him in the wall. Drove him in for certain. Watch from uh, Kevin Harvick's Hunt Brothers Pizza Cam. Oh, right wow. in his lap. Nowhere to go. And we'll ride with Martin Truex. Tough day for Truex. That's going to be very frustrated. Man, led a lot of laps, had a really good car, had a shot at it. The time's right. Reddick turned around there and uh, watched the leaders on the left and the caution light lower right. Caution is out. Oh, that's too close to call. Now remember, you got to go back to the last loop that they crossed yeah, to determine like the order. The one was ahead. Yeah, I want to see this jump right here. Watch this. Chastain was quite a bit ahead of him after a couple car lengths. I want to see the jump. Ah, Ross is put it on him. Well, but he ain't the leader either. That five car is supposed to be the first car that jumps. Hey, that's not for me to call. <laughs> no, you already did, Bill. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but what I say don't matter. Now we're going to listen in to Chastain. Yeah, he drove us right in it. Oh, okay. Wheel's still in the right spot. Shoot. He's going to have to hit us harder than that. You're the leader. Scuffed up some, but... Just scuffed up some. Hmm. Now, scoring has Chastain as the leader. And remember, it was not it's not the moment of caution except to decide the end of the race. You go back to the last scoring loop that they crossed, and that's where NASCAR measures who was ahead at that time, and that's simply to prevent drivers once the light's coming out to try to gain an extra spot or two before they set the lineup. But Ross was ahead of him even up till right about the point the caution came out. Yep. Chastain, how about that? Unbelievable. Man, I... Now which side do you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I don't want to be on the outside. Now that I've repaid the favor, I want that back. Eight cars involved in this pileup. Truex slides up to Logano and around. Larry said Martin's steering wheel was full left lock as far as it would go. Couldn't get away. And uh, what did Kyle Larson have to say about all this? call it, but he was to the gas before you. You did not initiate that restart. Just FYI for the situation you're in now. Oh, I know. Well, you called that, Bill. I put it yeah, on you. Were they almost at the end of the restart zone, though? Because then it's free for all. Yes, if nobody goes by the end of the restart zone, the flagman restarts the race. But Cliff Daniel saying that Chastain was on the gas before Kyle Larson. That's what I love about racing. There's two sides of every story. Depends on who's your guy, right? All right, let's uh, show you the timing line. That's the last timing line crossed before the caution uh, using our ghost car animation. Yeah, early in it, I mean, he didn't get to his, that's about where he actually got into him to put him in the wall, right in the middle of the corner, kind of getting in. Um, he was clearly behind him at that point. So what is Ross Chastain thinking? Inside turn one. Just in the bottom, but if the 24 goes with the five and the nine decides not to push, it's not going to be helpful. The question is, is the five going to, are we even, or does he want to drive me in the fence again? I think the five does the same thing if he's on the bottom. The help behind him. <laughs> Look at the help behind him. The yeah. help behind him, all three, that, so, that is Hendrick Carr's behind yeah, him. Chastain, um, you know. It's William right Byron or Chase Elliott. Take your, pick your There's poison. Which one you want Hendrick pushing? Hendrick Chevy, Hendrick Chevy, Hendrick Chevy. Ross Chastain, the leader. I don't think it matters who lines up where. He's, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't think, have any friends. I'm not Chase giving him the inside. Damage, though. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be 100% here. Um, 
It's all the push down the front straightaway, though, in my opinion. You you need to be in position. So it doesn't matter what happens when you get to the corner, just to push the other straightaway. I, I need to have her sorted out before I get there, Bill. And if, if I don't have a good help behind you, and he does, it ain't going to matter anyway. Hit mine a little bit. <laughs> we'll find out. Here are the cars involved in that crash. All with damage to some degree. I did not see anybody pull into the garage uh, on that one, however. Yep, Truex out of the race. He is the only car apparently eliminated in that eight car pileup. So, Larry, Mack, how many more cautions we going to have? <laughs> I don't think we're through. How about if I just leave it at that? I don't <laughs> think we're through with them. I'd probably put my money on you. Tyler Reddick had. Uh, I'd say second most damage to Truex uh, when he got turned around and hit the wall. He's able to continue, but comes to pit road for service. 22 cars on the lead lap. <laughs> Tough day for Tyler Reddick. There's a lot of these guys. Yeah, I heard you mention you know, Chase having trouble, um, damage on his car, if you will. That Harvick's got a lot on his. A lot of those guys back there, quite a bit of damage on their cars here when they restart. It's going to make it interesting, but, I mean, what do you figure? How many laps to go you figure when it starts? A handful? Depends on if it goes green. <laughs> We're only going to have a handful left. I'd say a handful and yep. another handful. a good opportunity <laughs> at another handful. Eric Jones, too fast entering pit road. There's your damage on Chase Elliott. Oh, uh, he is two laps down. Jones, that is. Chase in fourth place. So you got Trackhouse, Hendrick, 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 RFK with a Ford, Stuart Haas with a Ford, Penske with a Ford, Wood Brothers with a Ford, Bubba Wallace for 2311 with Toyota. But if the one car goes to the inside, you think he's going to back off in turn one? At all? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, we're going to get to find out. There he goes. He's on the inside. I don't know. I like the inside, Bill, because you've got options. Exactly. Eight right. are better than four. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Eight tires corner better than four, whether it's on a quarter mile or a mile and a third. That is true. So the 24 is behind the one. Well, here's the thing. You're not going to give him any favors. You moved him up, but you didn't put him in the fence. He moved you up and put you in the fence. You're going to take care of business if, if you're the one car at Chastain and go win this race. Again, been a year since he'd been in victory lane. That boy on that outside three times the bride was made. These guys are hungry, and they want this win more than ever. Yep, but then that opens the door for the 24. Who's that other kid on the outside of him? I don't know. He, I still say he's got some damage. Maybe it don't hurt it, but we'll see. Ross Chastain's last victory came right there at Talladega. Stay tuned. <laughs> that was several melons ago. We will have six laps to go when we restart. Chastain and Larson on the front row. Watch the jump. Watch the help from behind. Our lack of help from behind. Green flag. Chase had trouble in the gearbox behind Larson. Not much help underneath them. The race is on for the lead right here, one and two. Oh, Chase does not get into turn one well at all. Oh, he and they're on the fence. Hang on. Same thing. Went to run him up the racetrack. Still pushing you. Turned him. William Byron to the lead. Still pushing him. So All right, it. those of you scoring at home, how many saw that coming? I did. All of us. <laughs> Both cars out of the race. Uh, and this happy couple gets to go home together. Neither getting what they wanted. I want to go, she says. <laughs> she just said, I want to go home. Man, that's, that's unfortunate. I saw <clears throat> that one coming. Okay, Larry, you win again. Now look at the damage we there. We may not be done yet. On hey. Larson's car. <laughs> let's All right, let's again. break this down. I, Chase Elliott had a little bit of trouble behind Larson. Didn't get the push that I thought, but William Byron, we talked about the help there. Then you get into the corner. The five tried to turn down knowing that the, the one was coming up the racetrack. You knew what the play he was going to do. 
got into one another, wrecked. Wow. Took Andy each Mitchell. Other out. Andy Mitchell, great camera work. Wow. Children. Put them in a sandbox together and they can't play. I can tell you. Look, Kevin Harvick. How about Harrison Burton? Good run for him. Good opportunity. Justin Haley in fourth. Kevin Harvick in second. You believe this? So if Ross doesn't come up that far trying to squeeze the five, do they both make it through the corner? They're both racing hard. They're both knowing exactly what each other's holding for cards, and they try to prevent it from happening, and they both wrecked. And they're both going to be extremely mad. Well, Chase Briscoe had a great view. Here's Denny Hamlins. He's back on the lead lap here. Yeah. How about William Byron? William Byron was within two laps of winning this race last year. Hmm. Well, we'll listen first to Kyle Larson's radio. Why did he just run right into the fence? How does that make any sense? What a hack. Make that three races now he's taken us out of. Chevrolet, good job. Good job. Three races that that one car has taken us out of. Cliff Daniel not at all impressed. Two aggressive race car drivers. Race for the one of the most prestigious wins there is at Darlington. Neither one of them will want it. You know, given the kind of the situation, you know, Kyle Mata should have let him go as hard he was getting in there and then try to cross him over, but maybe that's what he was trying to do anyway. I don't know. But you can always look back at tomorrow and say, well, I should have done this or that. How many times did you do that, Clint? <laughs> yeah, a lot. That's uh, that's going to be a quiet old, old to bed tonight, early to bed. Yeah, that will be a quiet drive home, won't it? All right, let's go back to last year and give you one more look at last year's finish here. William Byron gets into Joey Logano, forces him up a little bit, got him into the wall. Joey thought, didn't like it a bit. As soon as he got to the bumper, William Byron did not waste any time, retaliated, then got out of that car and said he did so. That's one thing I did like about Joey. He got out, owned it, said he re re repaid the favor, won the race. I, he makes pretty much no bones about it. That's what I do love about that. You know, we, we, we're talking about all these scenarios over the last month, month and a half. That boy right there, 22 car, will get out and just say it. This is exactly what happened. Did you do it on purpose? Yep. So Kyle Larson is still on the lead lap after repairs, but he's going to restart back in uh, 21st. Kevin Harvick, man, I'm telling you, that Look. Ford Mustang, that driver is hungry. The closer. And there he is. Wants to win a race. One more race, he said, before he retires. Here's his opportunity to win one of the biggest ones. Well, all he had to do is we'll look at the replay from a minute ago. Yeah, where's he choose? You're going to go on the bottom? No, 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 no. Talking about going in turn three. Oh, yeah. The 22 and the 24. Oh, you're gonna, just going to move him? How about Harrison Burton? Wood Brothers. Would it be cool to see the Wood Brothers oh, win absolutely. this race? All right, Ross Chastain out of the race and released from the care center. If you look at the top eight, uh, here, I think you're only going to find one driver with a victory this year. This is a checkers or wreckers scenario. I think it has been for about the last 10 laps. It ain't over. But this will be overtime. Green, white, checker. Keselowski in fourth. Long time coming. And look at the Fords in that top half dozen. Two Chevys, four Fords. 
in the first six spots, and the Fords did not show a lot of speed in qualifying. Only one, Keselowski, made it into the final round. But here they are to battle these Chevys for the win, and the first Toyota is Bubba Wallace back in seventh place. There's the Jeff Burton paint scheme that his son Harrison is carrying for the Wood Brothers today. You so see Oh, go ahead. If you had the 24, what do you choose? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose the outside. I, I, I want the outside. I want. I need to get to the turn two. I, I need to be in position to turn two. I feel good about that. If I can get him around door to door to three and four, I've got him. You can't come off a two behind him, but I like the outside when I get to three and four. Okay. But after what we just saw, the key word is I got to get to three and four. Right. Here they come to the choose. I got to the get outside. to one. That's what I, I I like that move. So William Byron will have his teammate Chase Elliott behind him. Harvick's Ford will have Keselowski's Ford behind him for the restart. But I do think on the last restart, uh, didn't Raw start pretty quick in the box? They were pretty even on the last one. No, well, no just early they started in the restart early in zone. The box. Yes, early in the box. Early yes. in the box. I think that caught everybody else off guard. Okay. The help behind, yep. for sure. Yep. Yep. Neither car had any help behind. Yep. You're going right. to see more help now. Yeah, that created a gap. Yep. I think you're going to see the help on the outside, and you're definitely going to see this Brad Keselowski. Look for a three wide. If he lags back just the least little bit and gets a run on those two, or, is going for it. Or everybody knowing that it was Kyle and Ross on the front row created a gap. Yeah. There's the Goodyear 400 trophy that awaits one of these drivers in two laps if we get back. How about Bubba Wallace? See him in the backside of that camera shot. Man, what a turnaround for him. Credit one bank overtime. Here we go. Byron Harvick on the front row. We're green. Pretty good start for Harvick on the bottom. A lot of pressure. Giving him room, though. That's the important thing. Giving him room. There you're going to see him clear. Harvick's got a lot of damage on his car. Front four single file. It's on from there. Coming around to the white flag. One more, five, five. White flag for Byron, who came within two laps of winning here one year ago. Redemption time for him. Harvick five, car lengths back, long gap to Elliott in third. What a I'm, comeback for Chase. Oh, what a hell of a day for him. Yeah, Chase Elliott, good turnaround, taking advantage of this end. William Byron had a good car all day, top five car. Here he is off the floor, Mike. Rick Hendrick wins 296. Yeah, William Byron wins the Goodyear 400. Awesome job. Way to see it. Man, I'm proud of you. For your granddad, for all of our moms. Jay, really, I appreciate everybody. Love you guys. Please stay with it. Awesome job. That's what it's all about. Great turnaround for him. Harvick, man, second place. Elliott, third. Solid day all day long for Keselowski. Wallace with that huge rebound and Burton. That's a much needed top 10 for him and the Wood Brothers. I love that Harvick gave it his all on their restart, but he raced William clean down in a one and two. Yeah, Harvick did a very good job and didn't, didn't force the issue down there. And I don't think he. He probably didn't feel like he could beat him anyway, given where, where William had been all day. And he, he had quite a bit of damage. We saw all that wreck was right yeah. in his lap. And Chase Elliott, what a rebound for third place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's like winning the race for us. Brad Kozlowski fourth, Bubba Wallace fifth. Harrison Burton gets sixth. Bush, Haley, Blaney, and Busher, the top ten. Man, something about you, Bill. Everything just gets awesome. What's the deal? You show up and you. the whole race went haywire. <laughs> it's the seventh career win for William Byron, who last won at Phoenix. 
Yeah, yeah he's had his a third of the season. Terrible year. Yeah. <laughs> three wins? <laughs> yeah, three wins. He's had just a terrible year. And we're what? A third of the season? Well, keep coming up on half. He probably needs to go down and give Ross an attaboy, too. For Both taking. of them. Yeah. Thank you. Got to be there to capitalize on it, though, and that's oh, exactly what William Byron did. Yep. Eighth win of the season for Chevrolet, and the bow ties 43rd win at Darlington. Good car all day. Solid car. Jamie Little. William Byron, one year ago, the frustration, the fire that we saw in you of being wrecked from the lead with two to go. Now you come back here a year later, a little bit of redemption. Put into words what this one means. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, my granddad passed away on Thursday and just, uh, man, I wish my family could be here, but uh, just things have a way of working out, honestly, and um, it just worked out that way today. You know, we didn't have the, the best third stage. Um, we just kept battling and things just kind of come back around. So I uh, want to wish happy Mother's Day to my mom. Uh, my sister just graduated uh, school, so big day. Uh, definitely didn't expect this, but just thankful for a great team. and. Uh, yeah, just things have a way of working out and come back here to Darlington and have it go exactly the other way. Well, there's a lot to celebrate, obviously. It's NASCAR's 75th anniversary. You do it at the second oldest track at Darlington, and I just heard your team say win number 100 for Team 24. What can you say about this team and the process that you guys have gone through this year? Yeah, I'm just thankful um, that I was able to, you know, get in this 24 car. Um, I was, you know, too young at the time, I feel like, but, uh, you know, growing up, maturing, and just having a great team around me, being able to build the core that we have. I have a great group of guys, uh, Rudy, Brandon McSwain, Tyler, my car chief, everybody on the team does a great job preparing good cars, and uh, we work hard at it. So it's nice to see it, you know, go our way once. William Byron wins at Darlington. All right, Regan Smith has caught up with Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain checked and released from the infield care center. Ross, the second to last restart, what happened to turn one? Full commit uh, into one. I got really tight uh, and drove up and, and turned myself. I I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to I wanted to push him up. Uh, we had been trading it back and forth all day, and and uh, I wanted to, to push him up for sure, but definitely didn't want to turn myself in the wall. How frustrated do you think Kyle's going to be with you after this one? Uh, I will <laughs> not not. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the one standing here talking to you. So, um, you know, for everybody at Worldwide Express, Union Shippers, Global Trans, and to, to drive the big brown, big brown truck today with UPS on the hood was a dream come true, and, and we had a shot. And that's all we can ask for. Thanks, Ross. William Byron gets to celebrate with car owner Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon, the previous occupant of the number 24. Bill Elliott, thanks for joining us. Glad okay. to have you Thank for the you second year in a row here. I appreciate you guys. Y'all do an awesome job. Well, thanks, buddy. We appreciate the help. Thank you. Heck yeah.